Um, you, you have brought back a few things from the place where you encountered the... Uh, this would be your third proxy, I believe. Well, fourth, I guess, counting Gemery, because you haven't... Um, yeah, you encountered her first. So your fourth proxy... Um, has now been destroyed. You salvaged um, large parts of her um, brain and uh, brought it back with you. Um, maybe last... maybe we should trigger warning Arissa before we just come like barging in with pieces of brain. You already, oh, yeah. you already did. Okay. Conversation has happened. Yeah. That was last uh, last session. Yeah. Um, okay. Last we spoke, your intention was to take that back from uh, where you're at now, the um, Harpham coastline keep, and uh, head north to Shose where uh some people have some of the expeditionists have um gone back to the paladin location the second proxy and uh salvaged the remains of her brain uh which were destroyed in that uh encounter back then um and you were going to bring both of those back with you to All Saints, where hopefully that'll be enough for Arisa to make a good leap on her attempt at making her own version of a proxy. Well? If that all sounds good to you, I could, I could get you right into All Saints if you just want to jump, uh, or we can... Go a little slower. Up to you guys. I mean that that does sound like what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah I'm happy to jump. I don't think I'm okay there's with any the jump. Um, pit stops planned along the way, so yeah, I think we can just hop on. No, over. I don't think you guys are going to run into any problems on the way there either. It's just going to be a couple weeks of, uh, well, well, more like more like a week or so of hiking, and then. You know, uh, chilling out, waiting for the redshift to go over uh, at Shose, and then so um, we can do that. We can get you over here, Shose oh. teleportation. Oh. Okay, and the music stopped. It does stop. Uh, it'd be a little annoying if it was playing all the time. Stuff. Yep. Okay. That is correct. Yes, it is. Good. Um, I wonder what Shose's theme would be. I have to find music for every city. Yeah, I didn't quite split it into six or seven parts. Uh, maybe I should have done that, but. No, 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 no. I'm never going to ask you to do any more work than you have for us. Well, that's okay. Um, I think I would have liked it more if I had split it into more uh, more discrete parts. Part part three was really long. and then Part part one was like the correct length, and then part two and three were really long and four. Uh, anyway. Wait, there's going to be a part four? Four you, acts? You were in part four. Oh, we are in part four. I thought we were You're in, in part, part five three. now. Oh, we're in part five right now. There are five acts. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, in any case, uh, Albus Tavern doesn't know that. Uh, no. Maybe Ambergreen has been making the distinction in his right. mind. In my, in my epic. How many chapters is it up to now? I mean, it would have to be like nearing nearing a hundred. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly feeling self indulgent for me. I mean, as a musician, or if each chapter was a week, 
at a certain point, you'd be at like, uh, so that's a good time to tell you that it's we've flipped over the new year uh, while you were traveling. Um, actually, uh, no, you would have you would have gotten to Al Sains right before um, right before the new year. Um, Woo! Celebrating my birthday in All Saints. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you are 28 now, by my records. Yep, Alvis Taver has caught up to me. Very good. Ish. I'm actually, I'm, I'm still older by uh, an entire year, I think, because I'm going to be 29 this year. Well, don't don't worry because I'm sure there will be a ten to fifty year time skip at some point in the next few years. So is Naya twenty eight now? Uh, Naya's been no, not uh, your birthday happened a bit ago, and she you're still twenty seven. Okay, you've got yeah, you've got another two thirds of a year to go. Okay. Alvis's Alvis's birthday is the new year. He gets double gifts. <laughs> uh, I I have you set on the winter solstice. Actually, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, that's better. So you're 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 like a, a week and a half of the new year, basically. Yep. Um but yeah, uh at right now you have a wagon that you were able to uh borrow from um Harpum. Uh, you had a couple of things loaded up on it. Obviously, you had your piece of the proxy that you salvaged. Um, you also have a barrel full of rocks and a uh, unpleasant rock as well. Um, and you have the piece of the Paladay proxy that was salvaged. And th these are both these are both large chunks of. The crystal they don't make up the full mass um because of uh because of the fact that both of them were were heavily damaged um but uh together you've got maybe 30 to 40 percent of uh a proxy's head in your wagon Nice. But approximate proxy. Yeah. Approximately a proxy. Well, 30 to 40 percent. Yeah. Um and uh while you while you were oh, at from, Harpum and from Holiday, uh, how much more infrastructure was there like how deep and far did the wires go, and what did they connect to? The thick cables that uh, travel into the earth um, are designed to go very deep, but um, the people who sent to investigate them uh, managed to completely pull one of them out. Um, and uh, it was probably uh, uh, it, it was it was around a hundred feet in length, which is counting it being on the second story of that building. So cut a little bit off of that. Um, And it terminates in a sort of um, like a uh, claw or grapple hook sort of structure, like um, like it could be uh, attached or um, uh, secured, bolted down to something. Yeah, like with two uh, flatheads. Um, not flatheads, washers and a bolt. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Um, 
I, I, I have tinkering tools. I, I, I know, I know pits. But you could, you could get this, this claw salvaged if you like. Um, but, uh, is it almost like a fork? A fork is a good description. Yeah, like like a tuning fork. Maybe a little bit thinner because you said it could be attached to something. Um, I want you to think about it in in like a more triangular sort of way. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Totally like grappling, yeah. Yeah. So, like, um... what would be the purpose of something like that buried so far and so deep? Ar- Arisa has told you that um, the what she knows of how the proxies work is that they uh, they and the facilities and the star tower are able to um, draw power out of the earth. Um, but she doesn't know the details of how exactly it works. Mm. The only other thing I know that, you know, draws power from the Earth is the obelisk, I guess. The obelisks don't draw power from the Earth. They're powered by batteries. Oh, they are? Yeah. The batteries are charged in places of naturally high power. Ah. That's why they're so expensive. So wait. The expensive parts of the obelisks are the onyx and the mithril. The batteries are relatively... um, I mean, if you were if you were you know not part of a huge organization and going to buy one of these yourself, they'd be pretty expensive for you to just pick one up. But uh, rel- relative uh, to the rest of the infrastructure, the batteries are are a pretty reasonable um, device. It's it's not that difficult for an empire to produce a large number of them for their commission. Okay. Um, uh, but the batteries are designed, they're sort of like a um, a solar-powered battery, basically. They, you, you, you set them somewhere that is heavy with magic, they absorb the ambient forces, and they hold on to it until something draws it out of them. My main thought was if there's some way this would help us with um, making the connection between the uh, the crystals and the um, you know an Arissa's crystal or whatever to see if it's an easier way than trying to make it jump across a gap. I was kind of wondering if we could blend proxy tech with with our own Mm -hmm. already have i mean using our the obelisk kind of battery with proxy tech don't know if that's possible though oh and to answer mont lauren's question uh you were able to get another two of the uh golden rings um so now you've got a total of four plus your two large crystal chunks or spikes. So, uh, why do we all want to divide and conquer? I know we got a few things we want to get done here. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I know <laughs> that you all have some letters and whatnot that you're waiting on, those will probably arrive uh, next time you're back. Um, It is is a pretty long ways for messengers to go back and forth, uh, especially to Ilram Rol. But yeah, uh, what, what did you have in mind? Because uh, there's going to be a lot of um, Arisa doing work. Um, uh, 
Van is here, and uh, Dex and Angela's team are still at the uh, newest fort. Uh, they are getting ready to escort some people to the halfway point between here and there uh, to set up another obelisk. Um, you have you have Van, you have Arsa, you have uh, Lucent if you need her. Um, uh, what do you need to accomplish while Arsa is working on this project? Um, she'll yeah. probably ask one of you for a hand. Well, we definitely would like to give her a hand. Uh, the only thing I really had in mind was wondering if uh, 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 wow, I have his name, uh, Smitty uh, had made any progress on the uh, Jaws for Keen. I think. No. Now, was that? This was a completely different thing from that basilisk jaw, right? Yes. You just wanted the you just wanted the the jaw to articulate. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. that keen could chew and also uh that the light shard could be uh installed in the mouth so it could also have a headlight. I think he can get you that upgrade um, this week, uh, because that's that's a relatively simple mechanism. Um, the key is just hooking it up to Keen's control system so that she can control it rather than you having to do it. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, it was just the uh, it was just to give Keen the ability to chew on shit again. She, she is still a rodent. That's true. But no, other than that, then uh, totally, I, I can help Arissa. Uh, I'm also trying to learn a bit of this proxy tech myself. Okay, uh, so you'll you'll help Arissa, um, and uh, you've got you've got small hands, which is perfect for this actually, because you're basically connecting nerve endings uh, with. Uh, thin pliers and wire uh, inside those crystals. Fantastic. Um, having, like to, having to pull filaments out of the destroyed cracked edges and uh, arrange them just so that they can be connected into a usable format that Arisa has managed to uh according to her she's managed to divine how these things are meant to simulate brain activity um <laughs> although the whole concept is a, probably a little heady for albus tabber mm -hmm. yeah okay so it's about brains so it's a little heady no, 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 I get it. I, get it. I knew somebody was going to do it. <laughs> I calculated it. Um, interesting, interesting. I wonder if there's something that I could learn about this tech that I could add to Keen. Sir, is it cold here at Alsane's? It is fairly cold. It's um, getting to the middle of winter now. Um, so Naya's really comfortable, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she would be. Um, okay. The the plants are going dormant. Um, the um, the lake has not quite frozen over, although it's definitely frosty around the edges. Um, and uh, you know, every so often you get a little dusting of snow. You haven't gotten a big blizzard uh, yet this year, but. Uh, Uh, the streets streets are a little crunchy or slushy uh, every now and then, um, and the nights are very long. Uh, so the 
the fires have been going up. The kobolds have been keeping the um, torches and, and braziers burning uh, nearly nonstop um, and uh, working to put up um, more than more than what you see here on the on the old map um, proper proper roofing and and walls uh, to fill in the spots that have been that have been blown down uh, doors that can be closed uh, to keep the warm in yeah I suppose that they're gonna need even more of that what are they using for um fuel uh there's a lot of the giant tree that fell uh like the upper upper boughs of that um Pontus and Smithy uh kind of tore the whole top half of that tree up uh obviously they left they left the biggest chunk of it the the one that's overgrown with flowers and everything um because the kids seem to like it um but uh all the branches by now they've they've gotten through a seriously big chunk of those um and just been spreading those out using them as fuel and lumber um and then uh it's also been supplemented by uh th there's a pretty sizable amount of work being put into having uh expeditionists shipping lumber from the western half of the zone uh over to the eastern half where uh the 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 dry lands still are do not can, cannot be fully self-sufficient in that way same with food. You're not you're not really self sufficient on food out here, but you're getting regular shipments in, and all the work that you've done to make these routes safe and secure, and develop roadways and bases around uh, at good checkpoints that people can go to from red to shift to red shift makes it possible for your supply line to stay very much intact. Okay, thank you. Um, as Alvis posted in the chat, um, I was thinking we're going to need to come up with an additional source of fuel for the winter time um, eventually, because there just aren't enough trees yet, and I can um, I can spend my time here doing um, using the growth spell to encourage that to happen but it's not really the right season for that be better yeah. to do it in the spring um but i'm just wondering if we can do something clever or creative with regard to an alternative kind of fuel um or pulling something out of the volcano and bringing it back or you know i'm just kind of cogitating on what else could be done? We've got yeah. to cover a couple of years, at least, before we can go around chopping down trees. Well, Naya, I, I, I've heard that there's poisonous but flammable gases in volcanoes. If, if we could figure out a way to capture them, surely that would be a great fuel. Well, I don't know if the gases, gases, dealing with gases might be a lot harder just because they're lighter than air than, than if we were dealing with actual lava, mm -hmm. magma. Magma cools. Neither one of them are easy, but <laughs> at least magma is a solid. Liquid? It's kind of more like solid, uh, like liquid stone. It, it wets, though. See? Technically, to wet something is to cover a surface. I don't know itself. that it's wet when it's on fire. No, 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 but it's covering a surface with itself, and thus it is wetting the surface. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, but I, I don't know I that just, stacked flapjacks are wet. What? <laughs> I don't flapjacks. know that stacked flapjacks are wet. <laughs> yeah, you did them with the syrup? Are they moist? No, I'm just saying purely, you know, straight straight off the griddle flapjacks. If you just laid one on top of the other so that its surface was covered, 
It wouldn't oh, be instant oh, 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 I was in playing straight in man my here. Simplicity, I forgot something or other that had to do about like movement or whatnot. But but it's the it, it's the coding of an object with oneself or something or other that is the technical form of to wet something. Right. You have to immerse the thing to wet it, is what you're saying. It doesn't exactly have to be immersed either, because one the other side could be dry. It could be not. Gotcha. That, that's okay. in, that's okay. in fact a, a key characteristics of uh, why a thing cannot be wetted by itself. Water is not wet. Uh, anyway. I think the surface of water is not wet. Yes, there you go. So, uh, Mont, you, the people here are on top of stuff enough that there are, um, stoves being installed. Um, okay. but you can definitely spend time, like, going to help and build them yourself. If you yeah, like, no, if, there's plenty of work to be done. Right. If that work is already going on, I would absolutely pitch in, but I would kick it up a notch and build a sauna. Okay. Uh, yeah. likewise, uh, uh, Mont Lauren, um, um, if you're, if you're doing this kind of thing, perhaps you could bring to Smitty, uh, the idea, uh, since we're already bringing, uh, uh steam into the equation, um, uh, of a, uh, timekeeping system using steam. And oh yeah. I think pressure. Smitty could. Right. I think Smitty could totally do that. That said, I don't know that there's a value in that yet. I feel like that's work without uh, immediate purpose. You know, long-term investment, not short-term. Uh, we'll do it like, later. I don't think I would get to steam clocks until I had laid down steam pipe everywhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see. Well, that's what we're doing. We're laying down the steam pipe for the heaters. No, right now we're building we're building a sauna because they already have themselves heaters in the form of stoves. All the stoves should be connected to a big furnace or fire, so we could really see how much wood they're burning individually. Yeah, I get what you're saying. All of their stoves together, then. And I absolutely think there's room for steam works. I just think that now is not the time. Mm -hmm. You really save up on all that wood that Naya doesn't want being burned if you connected all of their current infrastructure together. I don't know that that's true. Boiler, you know, big fire. Yeah, but big fires require big fuel. Uh, also, there's a lot of dead wood here. Just, just as a reminder, that there. There is and was enough to to fortify a lot of these buildings. You've got you've got a good couple of city blocks basically built on top of the, the ruins by now. No, Alvis Sever is just arguing for a passion project mm. that he, yeah. he would like to see done and not actually have to invest any work in. I understand. Right. I think if we were gonna build a steam works in the short time, Elvis, it would probably be better if it gear towards defense like if we made like steam catapults or something like that well no 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 see this is exactly what i'm saying if we could manage all of the steam pressure with one big boil and connect them all uh, connect all their stoves together that means we could make pipes that then we can shoot steam out and superheated steam hurts well i'd rather not wasteful water like i assume that we would be taking uh water from the lake so i'd rather recirculate it in a closed loop you know that's that's definitely a uh, preference but i mean the best defense is often a good offense and this is last minute or sorry last second defense we're talking about you just need to boil your knife and then get her to Go through pipes. Right. Boiled. That's exactly what you do with your your <laughs> your ancient dyad. You just, you know, you just put force them into manual labor. That's that's totally fine. No. 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 
<laughs> Absolutely not. She she just, you know, seemed so willing to help before, I just assume. <laughs> She's already working through the evaporation and the feeding of the plants. And she gets rain. Um, and she gets rain and snow. Yeah. Well, that would be an interesting idea, you know, trying to keep a permanent, like, ice cap. That, that's tourism right there. That's definitely a passion project that can come after steam. You know, she, when, does get, she does get a bit sleepy in the winter, slows her down. Uh, and she's been, she's been snoozing most of the time you've been here this week. Um, shall I tell you how Arisa's work is going? Well, I mean, I'm helping her out, so yeah. Yeah. Um, pulling apart filaments and the crystal and being told that it's like a brain. You know, I don't think they've given me permission to dissect brains yet. Too much, uh, you know. Think, uh, That's okay. Well, this is a this is a sort of you're practicing on a synthetic one, like working in a lab uh, with a uh, like a medical student. Would Alvis ever know what like a proper lab is? Probably. Okay. At, at least the idea of a, a a doctor who can autopsy something. Which is yeah. Basically, what's happening now? Well, uh, Frankenstein, something at this point. It's a little bit of necromancy. Um, and he knows about alchemists too. Yeah. So maybe it's just putting two 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 together. It's like, wait, doctors would use laboratories as well. Um. But yeah, not uh, not not to not to talk about necromancy in this situation. Um, I don't mind learning necromancy if that's what this involves. No, Arisa says it's um. If I've got it right, it's a little bit more on the edge of illusion of all things. It's like um, making another you. Oh. Uh, in this case, it'll be me. Um, she's going to be sort of illusory, but also real, because she's going to live inside uh, this bit of crystal that you've got here. I know illusions. My, uh, my people are, uh, you know, privy to them. Runs in our blood. Now, what, once, once I started going down that route, a lot of how these things are built started making more sense to me. Um, Facsimile, um, simulations, and illusions. Originally, what were you saying? The original prop, or the original secretary was able to make copies of herself using this. They would have um, built the crystal structure at the tower she would have made the leap or made made the made the clone are you communicating copying displaying uh building the information making the image constructing the illusion there we go that's a that's a metaphor i understand how the stabber knocks on this kind of it Like what us. we're going to be what we're going to be doing today is connecting these pieces of crystal in such a way that they form a sort of cage. That's how I want you to think about it. Okay. Okay. Do uh, uh, out of character question? Do like uh, watches exist yet? Um, clocks for sure. Uh, pocket watches, I guess are yeah pretty reasonable give me yes, a second yeah it's a it's a french word 
but uh, uh, tourbillons and stuff like that, like the cages that move the, uh, what is it, the mechanism that keeps the clock accurate uh, despite gravity. Well, it's, it's a pendulum usually, but you mean the ones that are the little four, the little four things around the bottom, like like on a on one of those. Oh, I can't remember the name of the clock, but they were um, they were made for stagecoach places, and they had the glass case over them. Uh, it, it's part of a pocket watch technology. It's just a cage that it holds over the pendulum. Yeah, sure, much smaller in a pocket watch, but it was this kind of clock. I can't think of the word for it um, where they were large. Okay. Yeah. No. Then uh, uh, Alvis Taver would use a uh, uh, pocket watch gear example. Then probably not a French word, given that French is you know our our place. Sure. Um... Like the central gear of a pocket watch. Uh, it has to be able to hold the. Um... Well, I'm. Not really clear on whether the individual proxies have a soul, actually. They have a self, but whether it's a piece of the secretary's original soul or if they're just very accurate copies of uh, automatons is not um leaning toward the latter uh so i guess i'll be making an automaton of myself i suppose i could be an automaton of myself right now right this very moment i'm not sure i don't smell undead to you do i Lauren? oh uh, no you don't smell of pretty much anything actually no. So, maybe my soul is already long gone, and I'm just making a copy of a copy at this point. Um, in any case, uh, I have to... Make sure you don't lose any data that way. Whenever I do a scratching, you know, I try to make sure I have the finest paper and, you know, best papers. Right. That'll be the fuzzy part. I'm going to have to make the leap, and I'm going to have to keep myself here while also allowing myself to be there at the same time. That cage is going to capture me. I'm going to walk into it. We're going to shut the door. And in the end, I'm going to be on both sides. Hmm. Okay. How? How? Yeah. What's the mechanism? Once that that sounds to... entirely like, you know, if I had two buckets, and then I filled one bucket with water, and then filled the other bucket with the water that was in the other bucket, I'd still only have one bucket full of water. Very correct. Um... Before Dex left, he prepared some uh, cables that you can use to connect to the obelisk. Now, we're probably going to want to do this after the redshift breaks because it might cause the obelisk to short That's out for a moment redshift. like it did when Dex first connected me to the network. Yeah. Um, so we will wait to do that. But much like I am currently connected to the network right now from my crystal architecture in my tower, connecting me to this crystal will allow me to um, reach it the same way I do all of the isobelists. Remember how I told you before that if I try really hard, I can sort of see all of the obelisks at the same time? Yeah. That implies to me that I'm already in a dozen places at the same time. I just have to be in one more place. That is very interesting. 
you know, if it didn't limit me to, you know, certain special places in the world, I would very much like to learn that trick for myself. Well, I, I guess he, uh, the only way I know how to do it is to be a ghost first. Uh, although maybe if the secretary is up for it, you can ask her how she did it originally. Maybe if everything goes well, we can have her back in action someday. Really powerful wizards uh, can kind of do it. Yeah. I do think diplomacy might still be an option. I hope so. Well, that's what we're trying here. Um, if we can talk some sense into the proxy of Gemery, maybe maybe we can get something useful out of her, right? Um, so we're also going to take some of the obelisk batteries um, that you have here. Uh, and Smithy has built a uh makeshift base that you can secure these crystals into when we're done connecting them. Uh the the gold bands are not integral to the structure, but they are going to focus the energy so that it does not leave the crystals. In the form of heat or aura. Understand? Yes. They're going to be very loosely connected at their centers. So they need to be contained. Uh, okay. Normally, that is what those bands do on the on the rest of the uh, on, on all of the proxies. It stabilizes the device. The various heap fluctuations that you were talking about. That's right. So if we do all of that, we'll have a sustained source of power. Um, I don't exactly know how long four batteries will last, but we only need it to last about a week or so, maybe less. Um, considering that they can power your obelisks for three weeks at a time. Um, I hope I, I take less energy to run than an obelisk like this. Hmm. That seems okay. Do we have plenty of batteries on the band? Yes, you do. Um, there is always a surplus of batteries available at every commission base. Um, they are regularly taken by people to be recharged, and there are a few places in the zone that have been found where recharging is possible. Um, and, and basic math skills, even if we were to exponentially need to start using batteries, we would still have a surplus of batteries. You have enough that you could go without a shipment of them for about four months in any given location. That's kind of reasonable. Okay. I prefer six, but you know, we lose more than, given what more than enough have. time that you could evacuate if it was clear that it was that you were not going to receive new ones. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so, uh, and because this, this situation has been planned for a while, you have enough extras that you're able to spare a few for ours in the project. Um, mechanically, she says, I believe the system is sound. We're not going to know if it works until I try it. Um, and we'll try that in a few days. Um, but I, th I think what we have here is working. 
now I need to tell you about how I've been thinking this conversation is going to have to go. Remind me, you told the proxy last time that I had sent you as messengers and that we were working on a solution to her big problem, uh, losing connection to the secretary. Yeah, no, that sounds uh, correct. That is indeed correct. Um, I believe the best way to make this work is for you to load the we, we should not let her see the crystal device because she'll recognize it on the site. Um, if you could place me in a covered wagon, I think we could tell her that I'm using a experimental uh, hey, ah, Jesus Christ. That... voice system. Um, speak with her from afar um, because I could not make the trip myself uh, I'm too busy and we developed this system to help us communicate better uh, during this e emergency right parts of that are true yeah. we have a system like that well you have a system like that that we've been using for a few years Indeed. That does sound like a good plan. Um, and then from there, I'm going to have to talk to her and see if I can get through to her and maybe explain what's been going on and maybe come clean to her uh, if it seems like she'll be able to accept it. Um, how does that all sound to you? What's the uh, plan in the gravest scenario? Uh, um, well, we're avoiding the problem that I was most worried about, which is that the proxy would be able to jump into the network. Um, as long as we avoid that, everything is okay. If we have to evacuate, then we have to evacuate. You have to do something more drastic than that. Then I know you wouldn't do it if it wasn't absolutely necessary. Fantastic. I'm sure so, we can work with that. Um, oh, and that leaves me. There are going to be two of me after we do this. That's far too many. Um, here. You've already got plenty of old women running around talking in your ear and uh, um, coming up with grand magical plans for you. I don't think you need another one, uh, especially not another one of me. So um, once this is all done, you know, you'll have to shut down the copy of me that we're going to make. Uh, I hmm. don't have any plans to persist in that state, and I don't know how stable this device will be long term anyway. I'd rather just you, um, you know, click it off uh, as long as I'm still lucid in that state. Um, and uh the current me will still be here when you get back so no worries well yeah no in fact, that would be feelings. the uh the hope is not. that we're able to salvage what we can of this to maybe uh boost your own presence so after so, we're done we see what we can do to uh use this to kind of enhance you get your crystal a little bit more power well, it, it also occurs to me that uh, if this copy works in any similar way that the secretary works with her proxies, um, that the information that this copy proxy, Arissa, will have 
uh, gathered can be brought back to you. Uh, I sincerely ask again, you're asking us to euthanize a copy, you, that may potentially give you the experience and knowledge of being euthanized by us. Uh, it's not uh, tasteful. Ever seen the prestige? <laughs> what? <laughs> Spoilers. I uh um, ruined the trip. I mean, we is there going to be any damage to the crystals if the power and the battery plugged in runs out? We might have to do some work to put them back together in that case. I don't know if I, I, I don't know how long this is a delicate contraption. And I don't know how long it's going to last with the power surging through it. Uh, we might only have a week or a couple of days to use it. So uh, you'll have to move quickly and we'll have to talk efficiently while we're there. Um, but uh, ho hopefully it's not so extreme that uh, we couldn't rebuild it if we had to. Fantastic. I love the sound of that. Very well. That means that, you know, potentially it could be used after the fact too. As what? for euthanizing, keep keep in mind, son, that we've had this conversation before, and I personally don't really have any plans mm -hmm. of sticking around too much longer after your jobs are all done here. I'm okay with that. I'm well over a thousand years old at this point. So I don't really want to, how can I put this? I think it would be more trouble for everyone, including myself, if we had a second copy of me sitting around uh, chattering all day long. Um, and if it's anything like the proxy, the longer these two selves of mine stay apart, the more independent they'll become. I'd rather you shut down the copy while she is still a copy and not a individual, if that makes sense to you. Oh, uh, as long as I still have my wits about me when I make the jump, I'm sure I'll agree uh, when I'm over there, too. I guess we'll see. We will. I'll be counting on hmm. Now, we can go to the day that the red shift clears up for you and get ready to go to Gamery if you want, uh, because again, uh, it's not safe to create the copy uh, while the redshift is on because it may cause issues with the obelisk due to the connection. Um, is there anything else that you want to do in all things before that? Uh, did we have questions for Holtzman, Nimbus? Um... I didn't come up with uh, any in particular, so I'm probably going to. Hmm. All right. Well, and then I think we're good, right? I think, um, let's see, how many hours does it take to make a level three spell scroll? Um, I think that's a few days. Day. Days? That's five days. Five days. Okay. Well, then I'll make a scroll of um, speak with dead. And then um, probably swap that off for something else. Okay. And don't forget that if you did want to have speak with dead, you could always ask fewer than five questions. Right. Right. I can save that for another time. We can plan between sessions or something. 
Okay. Um, then on the day of the event, uh, it's the 11th of Giannis today. Um, the year has finally gone over to 1,222. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> It's tradition. going to be really funny in my next campaign that starts in twelve twenty one again. Um, <laughs> what, what what's the traditional celebration of the new year? Um, in the empire, I suppose, because we're yeah for the commission. Um, not much, although uh, you know now now that now that like full towns are established. Um, and, exactly. Uh, Captain Van wants to celebrate his birthday either way. So, um, uh, there's a, there's some small festivities here. Um, usually, what people do in the Empire is uh, spend the coldest night um, out of their homes and uh it, it's sort of a um stargazing focused holiday where you're meant to see omens and hopes for the new year in the night sky um oh shit i want to do that, that and cool. uh it is considered an extremely good omen if uh there happens to be a meteor shower during the event shit mount lauren we gotta look at omens yeah or find a way to cast a really uh convincing illusion <laughs> um happy holidays but yeah mo mostly um it's it's not a raucous celebration. It's uh, uh, not raucous, but not solemn either. Uh, that people do. It's it's more um, a peace and hope sort of holiday where people go out, they make hot drinks, um, and uh, and try to find uh, certain alignments of stars that they have been told stories about. Or, or have myths attached to them. And yeah, Van's birthday is on the uh, the leap day. So he doesn't have a birthday uh, this year. Um, okay. Uh, okay. I, I, I see that as a thing. My, my agency will uh, spread propaganda about that being a, an official historical holiday. What, Van Day? Didn't yeah, you know you. the ancient Every... empire Vesa celebrated Van Day? Right. If you, um, if you make Beholder Lanterns, Wizards of the Coast will sue your ass. Sorry, I'm here, right? The Eye of the Beholder. I know, so tempted to test this theory. Yeah, that's no. Sorry, I'm in monster. town here, right? She isn't at Jose anymore. What was that? Uh, Soriana is here, not at Jose. Correct. Okay, I think something that I would talk with her about is a um, if she's able to figure out some sort of like a. Uh, pass through stone, pass through solid matter sort of um, potion. Oh. Um, that is a difficult one. Uh, let me see. If you get to choose the gas of your gaseous form, you could just choose hydrogen and then do it yourself. <laughs> ah. What's hydrogen? Um, no, right. She's not sure if that's possible, um, but she has been working on a uh, 
diminution potion. Really? How would that work? Not not many I trust the adventurers? Yep. Yeah, which might help you get into tiny cracks and stuff. Uh, no, solid it's... stone. Yeah. No, I'm I'm looking for what we can do to try to pass through the walls of the tower. Um, hopefully have enough of them to go back the other way without having to do a teleportation circle. Oh, and I'm sorry, the diminution pill is already on the list. I forgot. I didn't have it marked down on my other sheet that it was already done. Um, um, or if not something for us, then a potion that's able to, I guess, reshape. Oh, no, that's probably not something that would work. Some sort of substance that would be able to kind of reshape. Um, Can you bring a sample of the thing that you want to go through? Um, yeah. Star Tower. So I will say this. Um, on our way out of the Star Tower, those tentacle pieces didn't explode into dust, right? They they left debris, correct? They currently are in the shape of a sparkling cloud of stardust around the tower. Mm, don't breathe this. Yeah, right. I suppose I, w- I would not recommend breathing it. Um, it would probably be a retcon to uh to do this, but maybe it'd be something to have others do to try to use uh water essentially as a net to capture some of the dust and then boil it down to see if we can get like the powderized form of the residue that we're dealing with or the the mineral that we're dealing with here. Well, yeah, you definitely didn't do that previously, but it might be something that you can do. Yeah. I mean, not, not even to use, um, uh, shape water to do it simply like one of the crews that's gone down there at some point to be able to just put out a large flat basin and, you know, collect uh, collect the water into barrels uh, to make sure to bring it all back, boil it down, and see, you know, of this glittering dust stuff, how much we were able to capture, and if there's enough to start doing testing and stuff on. Other than that, I don't think there was actually, like, a broken piece of mm-hmm. smashed down tower that, that we would have been able to grab a chunk off of, right? There was not. Okay, so then... Yeah, uh, effectively, a star tower is what we're trying to get through. It's <laughs> it's something that's uh, allegedly um, impervious to things, but uh, I suppose we haven't tried disintegration yet. We could ask well, Holtzman how to get to the tower, couldn't we? Well, he would probably say go through the front door. I was thinking if we could ask if there's a way to get through... Should all the entrances be blocked? Um, there are two questions. Right he there. might he might say teleportation circle, which is cool. There might be one in there, but I don't think we can access it unless we can find a way in. Unless we have some sort of magic that can um, allow us to go a distance through any material, so long as there's space on the other side. I don't um I don't know exactly how I'd be able to do this. Perhaps I've I've considered using the spell investiture of stone, but um it doesn't you know, I'm not sure if it's going to work as it would with mundane stone where I've seen the uh <laughs> I used to do an act where I would walk through like, you know, the biggest boulder in town and, you know, leave it Un, undamaged and uh, kind of carry like a, a little ribbon through it so it's like just this little piece of ribbon that's somehow now stuck in the boulder. People loved it. Um, I could try doing that but those were all just you know mundane chunks of rock. Uh, this star tower material apparently is a little bit more magical than that. It, it actually has one directional windows that can be 
activated from the inside. Um, I was only able to see that with true seeing. So that's that's kind of the uh, the the quandary here is um, if there's something in some sort of potion form that can or tablet or otherwise a substance that can be applied on something to help us <laughs> get through. Um, that's... I'll try, but I'm gonna have to start on wood, then stone, then metal, then that stuff that at that tower. Um, maybe we can get an obelisk nearby, and then I can get a closer look. Um, but... yeah, I know there are plans to eventually do that. I'm not sure. Um, leadership would have to tell us, um, or perhaps. Uh, what would leadership have told us at this point about uh, how those plans are going? They're working on the three closer obelisks first, but that the next one is a high priority. Gotcha. Okay, so that one will still be a little while, which is fine because we're not you know really ready to head back there yet. But that's kind of the thing that I'm hoping you'll be able to help us, um, you know, crack the case on being able to get through this seemingly impenetrable and now also modified by its own will and directives of itself. The fact that it just, you know, smashed straight down through the area where that guard was at, the, the big fiery thing, and just perfectly kind of set itself in place again. Um, I don't know how well it's going to respond to being breached. I'm kind of worried that if I try to walk through it, it'll just let me in, but it's just going to be solid stone the whole way through because it's able to project its dimensions differently than it actually is. I wouldn't get stuck. It would just knock me out and give me a big headache. Well, that's worth a try. You could you could try walking through it, and I can yeah, I'll I'll, I'll try, um, making something that makes you intangible, maybe. That sounds uh fantastic. Well, you know what? One of the other things to think about is, and this is going to be a bit odd, working with uh, Naya. She's got the spell uh, wind walking that creates it basically allows us to turn into fast-moving clouds of fog, would it perhaps be easier to have us in an already non-solid form and then have a, a potion that you create basically allow our fog forms to be able to pass through stone? Uh, do you think that would be easier? Um, let me look and see if I have something that Fog or person passing through stone. I mean, it's it's like, are you talking about going down, like drilling through stone? Or are you talking about it's, stepping through a wall? It's basically stepping through a wall is what we're trying to do. But um, I only have a rough inkling for my true seeing of how um, all right how well, thick me... it might be. It might have other intentions for us when we try to go through. And the other you thing have is, enlarge, reduce. By the way, if you're talking about a, um, and what do you, isn't it? Aren't, weren't you talking about a potion of making smaller? Do you have enlarge, reduce? Although it is not prepared. Yeah, there was a mention of a diminution potion. Well, maybe I should prepare this. If that's something you guys want. All right, let me we keep looking saying, here. We weren't saying we needed it. Uh, Soriana was offering it as a solution to our problem. Okay. Hmm. 
I also wonder if that's the entire wrong approach and we just need to have uh, Captain Van blast it with um, his anti-magic activated so he's able to nullify the magic and disintegrate through. Uh, you know, I'm yeah, actually... why don't we bring the beholder to the star tower? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, next time we go there, I suppose that's something we should consider. I mean, are we really the aces without fan? <laughs> you know, I, I wonder, and don't take this the wrong way, uh, Captain, but I wonder if there's some way we can just, like, tie, like, a string or something around you and, and just kind of pull you along with us like a like a giant balloon or something. So that way, you know, you don't have to worry about the speed of travel and we can just kind of bring you along quicker like I, I i i've never really known beholders except in the the fanciful stories about them uh i'm other perfectly than you, happy so. to sit in a wagon if oh. traveling distance is what you need uh how about riding a spectral horse i've got capacity for one more of those before i wouldn't be able to make enough for the crew can beholders ride horses? I'm a bit big for it, but if you can fashion a fancy saddle, it might work. Wait, wait, wait! How can be how, how can beholders be perfect in all things if they don't have a means of horseback riding? They're so perfect they don't need to ride a horse. <laughs> you know, and it's going to it's going to be an interesting thing because instead of conjuring the horses and then putting the saddle back on, it might just be easier to strap the saddle to you. So that way, when the horse regenerates, it's, you know, continually saddled. Ben, you, you know, ben. Elvis Taver, there's something to be said for not encroaching on the agency of another living creature. But there's a lot to be said for that. Horses love being ridden. Keen enjoys that's, the that's why they call it breaking them, right? I didn't yeah. break Keen. No. Be 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 Did loves I break to be you? Keen, no. Keen's a bit Nimbus, of a different I case. Have, Nimbus, I have transmute rock, which can turn rock to mud or mud yeah. into rock. Yeah, it's just really just make something mud. It's Star Tower. I, is I'm not definitely... Well, but if, you, if there's concern about getting stuck inside a stone wall, that is a guaranteed release if I prepare it. That could be a yeah, good way to go. Um, oh, I'm, look, I'm still just wondering what the magic protecting it might be and how it might have been modified in its current state. That it seems like it is a part of the living will of the thing that calls itself the heavens. It's making the redshift. Interesting. Also, I, I think it's pretty safe to assume that the Star Tower is not made of stone. I mean, what, do you think it's a, a, a living, like a flesh of sorts? No, 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 no. Please don't slap me for my ingenious observation of this, but the Star Tower is made out of a rare material known as Star Tower. <laughs> I mean, I just, it doesn't have any of the characteristics of rock other than, like, base appearance. We don't even know it's a mineral. Like, it, it could be something else entirely, is what you're suggesting? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I'm Not from saying, around here? Yeah. Yeah, it is a star tower. But yeah, also, we I mean, have uh, three questions to potentially ask Holtzman now. Yeah, well, we'll hold on to that, I think, until we're ready to actually do something more actionable with the tower. I think we should probably um, make sure to keep Gimmery in focus right now, as that is the primary project. Right. Uh, Definitely. I figured I'd see if we could get something working here with you Soriana, because you have tools and methods that uh are pretty amazing
Uh, well, I we'll can see. Try. If you're okay with being the test subject. Yeah, that usually sounds safe. Mm, test subject. I remember those days. Very short. I moved on fast. You don't last long unless you move on fast. Feeling nostalgic? Well, just a little bit. I still have this one spot where they tested a lotion. Hmm. Off for life or other way around? Well, I just call it a birthmark now. It's uh, in the shape of a nifty little like star. Neat. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, well we'll we'll figure that one out. I wonder if there's anything that would help us here with um with what we're trying to do, but I suppose we'll have to read the situation when we get there. We're going to be wearing the stuff, we're going to have all the banners and everything, so we'll look as official as possible. That's an upgrade from last time. Yeah, I guess no, none of us have to really be in hiding. Marissa says, as long as you're dressing the part, um, I think we can arrange it such that you're my escort or my my uh, device's escort. I'm not there, remember. I am right. not there. No attention to the Arisa behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. There will be no Arisa behind the curtain. But they're real big. But they won't know. Did you pass cast without or pass without trace on her and then just keep doing what we do? So that she's the only like her object, her vessel is the only thing that is passed without a trace, but but it does. I mean <laughs> pass like without trace in the wagon. Pass, That's what pass I'm saying. without like, trace like, implies that people wagon. aren't no, seeing no. you passing through the first time. Well, I mean, we have to be visible, or I mean, we don't, but it seems like ca Pass Without Trace doesn't affect the, doesn't affect the security, right? But if we could put it on the contraband, so the contraband is passing without trace while the rest of us is pa passing right in the open, then, I mean, isn't that magical smuggling? Well, it says each creature you choose within 30 feet of you. So, you know... Is Arisa a creature, right? Right. So what's the definition of creature? But it says a creature, and it says creature again, and possibly a third time, that a creature that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or other traces of its passage and receives a plus 10 bonus to dexterity, self, stealth checks, and cannot be tracked except by magical means. And it was so nice when you cast that on me that one time. What did I get like up like thirty something to my stealth roll? It was it was fantastic. Yeah. It's probably now what's going interesting, it says more... for the duration, each creature you choose within thirty feet. It does not say what the level of creatures is. <laughs> Could I do a dozen? I think it I think it's a uh, oh yeah 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 that that spell is is all creatures within thirty feet of you. Yeah, I think oh. people do whole parties more. more okay, than more. so um, if, if we wanted, we could do everybody. If Arissa is a creature, to be more of in a uh, deception than a stealth situation here. Yeah. As long as you have a covered wagon, there's no real reason for the stealth. There's nothing uh, that... Right, we're kind of doing the Trojan horse thing, right? There's nothing yeah. visible that is not meant to be seen, um, but you will have to... 
he will have to try probably some deception on the way. Oh, they might just let us in too. You know? <laughs> if they remember us from the last time we were in the well, loop. Even if they don't, well, okay. we look we look a lot more official now. I mean, definitely true. I could cast disguise self. Be the first time it would be useful. And I could wild shape into something, you know, a horse or something, if we have livery for that. We have the current yeah, steward of, of these lands with us. Not a group of five people is not too uh, too shocking, um, right? Especially if they're led by a blonde elf and Mithril Army. Okay. Carrying a wagon all the way from the Flower Sea. Right? Mm-hmm. It's a long walk. And we got tons of credibility props. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. I have the equivalent of a um, fuck, okay. all, all Saints is it all? And I can't remember the name of the place where we're going. I have a uh, Gemery. Gemery. Sorry, yeah, I have the equivalent of a Gemery um, orange vest with uh, high lit uh, reflective stripes on it. <laughs> right, and a clipboard. Yeah, and a little clipboard. Right. And we're just gonna walk in. We're just doing some inspe- inspection. Don't worry about it, man. Don't mind us. We'll yeah, try to keep out of your way. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not here about. You guys. Uh, so shall we do it? You guys were not gonna ask any questions to Holtzman first. Not this time. Okay. No, I did want to plant that seed with Decus though about uh the nature of the redshift. Um, yeah, I'll have to chat good. with him over the Obelisk Network, but that is uh, I mean, he's around, so uh. Yeah, it's not that I really want to act on now or anything. I just wanted yeah. to plant a thought in his head. My basic theory is that the uh, the redshift itself is completely uncontrolled, but that this the heavens entity is exerting its will to force the redshift to reveal truths that it wants, and that maybe we can do the same if we could figure out the trick. Whoa. That sounds uh, remarkably dangerous. Well, I have a way to safely experiment, because I have a tiny bit of redshift trapped in my sword, if you recall. I do, I do. So, um, that sounds remarkably dangerous. That's about what you told me you did to the glass wall. Remarkably dangerous. Right. Which is the what triggered the thought that since then we've been treating the problem differently, but I think that's just us handicapping ourselves. Sure. Remember the um twisted unicorn horn that we had way back when? No yeah. guts, no glory. Remarkably dangerous. That was used to uh that was used to pierce and wall. shatter the glass wall. Well, un un unreal the glass wall. Yeah. Right, which I believe took the form of it falling, like, you broke it. You didn't unmake it, you broke it, broke it. No, I unmade it. It didn't no just... No guts, no glory. I thought it didn't just pop out of existence, but... I thought it explicitly did. It I, wrong. I thought it fell apart. My memory is that it, that it fell oh. apart. Oh, you can put it in your songs that way, but that wasn't exactly what happened. That's probably that's exactly it. I probably put it in my song because that way because it went poof and I was like, well, that was fucking anticlimactic. <laughs> and like in stage, you could do this like a you know like literal shattering glass right. to get right. the sound effect. You know? Right. We have like a wall behind us and it like falls down. You know. Right. Right. I see it. I see it. Right. We'll do that one in. Um, we'll do that uh, in the city of Gemery. I think when we're you know. Right. But to Amber Green's point of danger, my intention is not to do this experiment now or to even ever do it while the redshift is everywhere because I have a little bit of trapped redshift. So, you know, hopefully that can scale the risk, right? Yeah, okay. 
I was just saying this. This sounds like a great plan, but it sounds remarkably dangerous. And the truths I wanted to reveal are relatively small. You know, be sharper, be longer. You know, right, right. Turn it into a rapier. That's both. Oh, dude! If I could get the equivalent of like a a rod of godly might out of that, that'd be all right. Wait, I don't. I have a rod of godly might. Different campaign. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, no. One of my characters has one of those. Um. Yeah. Let's. Uh. Lordly. I mean. Yeah. Sorry. This is what happens when you scatter your brain across a multiple people in multiple universes. Dex says, look, look, I know at this point, if, if you've got your mind set on something like this, you're going to try it at some point. So uh, just try not to get too carried away. I'd rather watch. do these while you were here, because... You know you want to watch. I mean, we can I mean, do that just... too. Yeah, I just, I mean no disrespect. Uh, I, I am. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't feel like me gaining a new ability is as useful as you gaining an understanding of the redshift. Do you understand? Aww. I do. All right, then. We'll do it next time we're together. Excellent. Now, a few days later, um, the redshift breaks in the early morning, and the uh, the clang of the bells alerting the rest of the base oh, yeah, to that fact yeah. ring out. Um, and that's when you are prepared to make a copy of your halfling. <laughs> hey. Well, she's going to be doing most of the work. Um, she just needs you to get the thing set in a wagon, uh, which you have. Um, because it's going to be a little bit harder to move once you know everything is online and stable uh you don't want to jostle it or anything uh because this is a very delicate architecture um and uh you've got what are essentially um jumper cables uh that you can hook up to the uh obelisk and uh, re really anywhere on the mithril artifice will work um, because the mithril is the conduit for the entire thing. Um, Should have asked Pontus to create some sort of cushion for this device. Uh, I mean, yeah, put put it on put it on a few blankets. Uh, but she'll need you to hook all of that up for her, Alice Stabber. And oh, yeah. once it's hooked up, you have to put in the batteries to the um, to the base device. Yes, ma'am. Your will shall be done. Okay, now, you know, if this goes all wrong, you can blame. You know, you, you do you do what we discussed. You uh, if sparks start flying, you unplug it and you start out. Okay. 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 Tell me when it's powered up. All right. Let's get this. Power started. I don't know what you say when you turn things on. Get it? No. Punch it. Kick it. That'll do it. Yeah. There I go. Three, two, one. Psh, psh. Wow. 
Should have said make it so. <laughs> um, she, you see her close her eyes for a moment. She opens her eyes and says, ah, I don't know if it worked. I don't, I don't feel anything. I don't sense anything over there. Well, I look at the uh, device. Arissa 2.0, you here? It rings and you hear um, hello? 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 No, no, it looks like it did work. Welcome to the world. We are friends. I'm the copy. I'm the copy. I still feel like me, but I can't see as clearly. Hearing's a little bit fuzzy. Well, it is slightly different hardware. What did you say? I said it is slightly different hardware. It's a different crystal. You know. A little, little, little broken up here and there. I sort of feel lightweight, like I could float away at any second if I'm not careful to hold on. Oh. But that, uh, it, but we did it. I'm here. The world says hello. Like one we have a lot of time to um, waste. Wow, this is a weird feeling. Um, I'll just hurry and disconnect those things so we can uh, be fully separated. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Here. I guess that was a little bit easier than I thought. Um, I like I like how sound effect equals done. <laughs> Good role play. Probably didn't mean hundred percent. Or maybe whatever bits of the proxy is still in there are helping out a little bit. I mean, it's still her brain, after all. Right. Interesting. I so is feel this like me? The other one says, "This is a construction in a construction, a copy in a copy." If you were hoping for the opposite, uh, sorry to say, I don't have any of these proxies memories that I can. Find here. What I feel able, I think we can do this. Fantastic. Sadly, we are going to have to put a blanket on top. Oh, that's all according to plan. Keep the wagon covered and I'll um you just need to tell tell her it's a delicate new prototype that some of the engineers have put together. And uh, I'll, I'll do the rest from there. If she's anything like my proxy, anything like what my proxy said she was like, she should know me. She should trust me. No, well, she's never heard my voice before, but 
She'd have no reason to doubt me. You certainly seemed coherent enough to grant us a little trust last time. Yeah, it took some getting to to get her to let us in. It should be easier this time if there's <clears throat> any memory of the last time, plus we we look more official. Right. And let's not wait should. any longer. Hurry up and waste any time, yeah. Let's get yeah. me there before something in this thing breaks down. Who knows how long we've got, kids. Yeah, let's get to it. I'll try to avoid the bumpy roads. Would you put a tensor's floating disc in a wagon and use it as like a shock mount? I think it goes slow. But also it only lasts and in... it's not very it, it doesn't have a long duration, but but whoa. I think you could as long as it like as long as one thing isn't more than five hundred pounds. Yeah, I think you could do that. It just wouldn't last very long. It's only a few yeah. rounds if I remember right. Right. Yeah, it's only an hour long, so it would probably be Is it, can it ever be cast as a ritual? Uh a wizard spell. It can. You can cast tensors as a ritual? That's cool. But like using tensors as an isolation platform is um Yeah. That's clever. That's that's <laughs> that's thinking with wizard brains. <laughs> um let me gather all of your tokens up here. No. Okay. And let's go to the location that you're going. Uh, you'll have to stop overnight one time. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, you... Well, let me tell you what happens when you get there. Um, you travel for the day across the Badlands, and you, you know the way to Gemery. Um, so it's a short one-day trip. Um... Arsa is in fairly good spirits from inside the wagon, um, although she's a little, uh, you might say, spaced out uh, most of the way. <laughs> um, when you arrive at the rundown walls of Gemery, um, You find that all of the proxies are still going about their daily business as they were last time. Um, and when you pull up to the main gate, the two who are leaning on spears that do not exist and who do not have heads say with the proxy's voice and mannerisms uh, to state your business. Uh, if nobody objects, I'll take the lead here. Um, yeah, as you know, yeah, suggested. as they good. Um, yeah, as they, uh, you know, as they, they make their introductions, I'll, uh, I'll step forward or, or rather, you know, trot forward on, uh, on Bet Mounty, um, salute down to them and say, uh, I'm Sir Malarin. I bring, I bring news. No doubt you are aware that the, uh, proxy is now disconnected from, the secretary that's right this is a kingdom-wide issue we uh we are part of a task force uh assigned to restore communications in the meantime until the problem can be addressed we bring equipment from Arissa of the star tower who has devised a temporary workaround to our problems we need to talk to your proxy so that we may apply this hardware here and restore your connection to the rest of the kingdom. She says, good, we've been waiting for you. Um, the, the proxy has been eager and worried. So uh, do you know the way? 
We do. And I signal from the wagon. Okay, then. Um, and go right ahead, Sir Montlaren. They open the gates. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Um, if nobody stops us, then I will just simply begin, you know, trotting to the uh, to the tower where the proxy is. Okay. Um, and on your way through the city, which uh, has, to your eye, maybe changed a little bit since you were last here. Um, things are a little more wobbly than they were previously um although nothing is moving at current time but for the several thousand proxies who are all going about their daily invisible business um street merchants and um additional guards and laborers and even a few of them who are running around like children playing tag um in the form of a uh adult elf without a head um some of them stop to glance at you like anyone would if you were in a situation where this was real um but nobody really bothers you because you look like you have official business and you know where you're going. Uh, when you get to the central sort of pyramidal tower that is coiled by a cable that glows rainbow, um, You stop the wagon in front of it, and um, well, how how do you announce your presence? Uh, yeah, I'll dismount, uh, approach the entrance to the tower, uh, and, and I will say, uh, "Milady Proxy, uh, we have come very far from the Flower Sea itself to bring." What we hope is the solution to our disconnect problem, uh, as devised by Arissa of the Star Tower. <clears throat> May we speak? May we enter? The door at the base of the uh, tower slides open on its own. And inside you see the crystal. Intact. I'm sick. Um, and her voice rings out the same as all the other ones around the town she says great I've been waiting for you have they figured out what's gone wrong why we can't reach the secretary uh i motion for folks to start unloading equipment um and step forward and say admittedly milady it's uh it's magic beyond my ken but there seems to be some disruption in what i can only describe as reality that has somehow disrupted the connection that you all share That does not sound like a good omen. Tell me what 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 are the experts here saying? Who have you brought with you? Uh, I have brought the wizard Nimbus uh, and several other assistants. Um, more importantly, however, uh, what we have brought, I hope is a way to temporarily restore connections between yourself and other pieces of the original network. Um, may we bring this equipment in? You'll probably recognize it. It's very similar technology to yourself. Just allow me to pause because 
the uh, the suggestion that Arissa had given to you earlier was that she was going to stay, her, her device was going to stay in the wagon, and she would talk to the proxy from a hiding spot. Yeah, right. Uh, right. As, a, as a remote communication machine that is a little too delicate to move. Yeah, that's okay. why Alvis has been trying to stay on and near the wagon. Uh, using Keen probably as a helper to bring the wagon closer yeah. to the then let me refine that instead of yeah, offering if you want to if you want to change the plan a little bit that's fine but I, I was just if you want to if you want to go with that then that was the yeah uh, yeah I had just forgotten so yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I instead would have said I brought what I hope is a way for you to communicate with the rest of the network and may we activate this equipment Um, she'll say, okay, well, uh, I don't see why we shouldn't give it a try. Um, who, uh, how, well, you said it was beyond your knowledge, so I apologize. Who, who will I be able to communicate with using this? Uh, we believe that the closest active connection will be with Arissa herself at the Star Tower in the Flower Sea. In a meek voice, uh, rarely uh, heard, uh, Alvis is like, you may speak directly to the wagon. Got it. Um, oh, which guardian Lumfield? I've... Uh, spoken to her uh, in a sort, uh, not directly. Um, so it'll be nice to finally meet her. I guess I'd prefer better circumstances, but um, okay. And the the device is in that wagon. He said precisely. Uh, in theory, you should be able to speak to each other now. Um, Lady Witch Guardian, can you hear us? Arissa. Um, her voice is speckled with disconnection, but, um, that might make it all the more authentic when she says, uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello there, Gamery Proxy. Sorry that we had to meet under such uh, worrying circumstances, but uh, my friend here is right. There's uh, evidence of some, well, uh, for now, I'll call it a um, highly magical issue affecting the area around, um, well, various parts of Vesa. But some of the folks uh, around my tower and uh, from Vess have helped me build this communication device. It's a, a little fragile, so I asked uh, our escort to leave it in the wagon. Can uh, you hear me okay? I think I, I heard what you were all, uh, your introductions. So, I hope it is working both ways. Um, the proxy says, uh, "Yes, great." So, this is an alternative to the usual system that we use. But what what's 
what's going on around Vesoth? We haven't heard anything here. Uh, as far as we know at Gemery, nothing is, uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's just been business and daily life as usual. Um, I haven't been able to talk to the secretary or anybody at best for weeks. Um, I mean, we've had to rely on paper messengers and even even with them, um, the, the information is non-existent. Um, Arisa says it's um, well. Uh, from where I am in my little tower overlooking the flower sea, it's uh, resembles something of the aberrant, I'd say. Um, if I can be frank with you, because I know that's what you'd prefer, uh, uh, there, there's talk that perhaps uh, some uh, some nature of the the ley lines around our kingdom may have become entangled with some other force and uh We're not sure if it's a random occurrence or, uh, well, uh, a hostile attack seems unlikely, but I, I know that the, the, the king and queen have not entirely ruled out the possibility. Uh, I'm, I'm told we have all of our best, um, people looking into the, the, the sites where the, the most extreme events are occurring, um, but uh, all all of the proxies have lost contact with each other. No, none of us can um, none of us can make contact. So uh, in lieu of that, uh, and in the interest of trying to get this communication back together, so we can get you all working, you know, w with each other once again, um, we we do need your help. Uh, hopefully this prototype will work and, um, you know, while, while I'm here, um, I could tell you a little bit more about what's going on and, and, and maybe, um, we can, we, uh, I could pick your brain for, uh, what, what you might think about the situation. Um. Uh, and uh, besides that, um, it is uh, it has been a long journey for my um, for my kindly escorts here. So I'm sure they'll want to take a few hours to uh, to rest if if you'll uh, give them a little bit of hospitality, and uh, we can. Um, discuss uh what in the world we are going to do proxy says um that's fine yes um you all can uh do, do what you will. Uh, I think Arisa and I are going to have to talk about... Uh, well, I want her to tell me everything. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. Um, so, um, 
please, if you uh, if you need anything, um, <clears throat> there's an inn down the street. Uh, I'm told they have very nice beds and uh, a good stew that this time of year. Uh, RSS says, uh, great. And to uh, Mont Lauren, she says, um, yes. And I'll ask her about that thing that we discussed earlier. Um, <laughs> since it will be relevant, after all. Um, what are you investigating for, Alex Tower? Uh, the proxy's hardware, looking for ways to quickly disconnect or uh, disable it if needed. You I'm think also you could... really interested in the device by itself. I, I would want to do it without damaging it like Mon Lauren does last time. I'm sorry. You think you could cut the rainbow cables and it would cut all power to the system, shoving her down immediately? Uh, you'd probably need two people to do it quickly enough, though. Is there any way to discern where those cables go here in the city? If the one at Paladay was any indication, they go deep into the ground and connect to something somewhere else. Far away. With the, with the, uh, not far away, necessarily, but deep. Uh, with those claw endings um, that latch on to whatever they latch on to. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there are any sewer in Access pens, doors. Can Bet Mountie do that? Sure as fuck can. I just read it myself. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is he nice. your feed by now? <laughs> no, that's in standard. That's in standard. Uh, uh, fucking finds to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> one mile from you. Holy shit. That's so good. That's better than a fucking familiar. Its intelligence is six and it understands one language of your choice and you can communicate with each other telepathically. Sick. Yes, okay. That's okay. so okay. good. <laughs> Well done. When you're familiar, it's, it's sponsored a, by God. It is. Every, Are you wearing a wire? Then, no, I'm wearing a horse. <laughs> every now and then, you're reminded that that horse is just a dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's dead. Dead mounting. Oh, okay, I will try the ride. But he likes being a horse. Yeah. We're both. Um, and the cheese rings. Like, maybe we need more fries. Sorry, more chicken. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, he'll report to you everything they say to each other whenever you're not here. Uh, what are you yeah. all going to do while they get to uh, talking about this aberrant behavior that Arisa is? Um, using a few of your stories to describe access ma ma maintenance access panels to the other ground maintenance access panels to the underground maintenance access panels to the other There's well the underground. Won't, won't she know if we don't go down to the end uh well I'm going to go down to the inn regardless because I'm going to sit and listen to them talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean we all have to. Like, we can. Well, I could wild shape into something useful, maybe. Right. Um, or Alvis, you could. It's split not off nighttime group, yet, is you know? it? I uh, know. We explicitly came in the morning, right? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, I will uh, I will bow to uh, to the proxy, and I will say, uh, well, by your grace, then I will I will take my leave. I'm sure there is much for you two to discuss. Well, this time we'll give the wagon and equipment one more, you know, look over to see if it's secure. No random earthquakes going to jostle it or anything too much. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Um, <clears throat> sir? Before, before we go, um, we want to just take a quick moment to inspect your uh, connection cables there, if that's okay. Not going to touch anything. Just we need to uh, look and make sure that there's no uh, fraying or severing or anything that's gone on. Thanks for reminding me. This is why you get the bonus. Well, uh... You got the set of hands, though. <laughs> I'm all thumbs when it comes to that tiny stuff. I'm happy to let you investigate. I'm... Self-diagnosing, I don't notice any problems other than that I cannot reach this, which uh, to me indicates a problem further outside of Gamory. But but feel free to look around. Um, although um, if there was an issue with how uh, excuse me. Um, If there was any issue with my core power draw, um, uh, to the to the uh, deep mana wellspring, um, deep mana wellspring. There we go. Then that would probably re require. Um, Uh, that that would probably require a major excavation, and I might need to be moved. Um, uh, but yes. you, uh, as long as all of the power is coming in, then there's no issue. Do uh, do we have an access tunnel to the deep mana wellspring, or is that all uh, kind of built down underneath? That's just, uh, it's just earth down there. Hmm. At least that's what they told me when they put me together. Well, are you able to detect any, uh, mana from the deep mana wellspring there? Or is it, um, is it having any issues? Is it? Maybe not coming through the way it used to. I wouldn't be talking right now or awake if there were. Uh, I wasn't. Uh, well, that's that's certainly true. Normal about a power. Um, if there was any kind of interruption, I'd probably be suffering an outage myself. Um, and hmm. in that case, probably the people of Gemery would have run straight to the to look for some help. Um <laughs> what um what about any um perhaps fluctuations that it's it's not coming through at exactly the same uh pace or energy or frequency that it used to? Are you able to detect that? I can't remember uh which ones that were installed with that. What, uh, it... let me double check and cross reference my memory. Uh, that is a little bit strange, uh, now that you mention it. It's The uh, 
Well, the temporal vibe is a little bit different than the last time I took a close look at the power, um, which might indicate that there's something strange going on in the region-wide flow of magic through the land. Um, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's opposite. And if you're saying, Arsa, that uh, uh, we've potentially gotten entangled, um, with some cosmic situation, uh, aberrant, uh, then uh, uh, mild temporal uh, mismatches is uh, a kind of, uh, it could happen. Hmm. It kind of feels like the magic in the earth may have been running at a pace that's a bit faster than it's supposed to be, or something like that. I've never seen anything like this before, to be completely honest with you. Um, This is new. Uh, 5,000 years, and I haven't had any aberrant entanglement uh well i i don't want to get all all of you in a panic don't worry arisa and i will figure out a plan um we'll get in touch with everybody at vess and all of my other proxies and uh we'll, we'll figure out what's going on before too long things might be a little bit weird uh, around the kingdom for a few weeks to a few months, you know. Um, I know that's, that's a long time and regular people time scales, you know. Uh, I, I, I do, I do keep that in mind. Um, but uh, it's you know, lend us your trust. Uh, we're bound to ask you for help uh, if there's anything you can do to help us. So uh, d- don't worry, we'll have. Um, of something for you to do here. Well, all right. Uh, hopefully we can start coming to some resolution on this pretty quickly. I hope so. I've never been unable to talk to the secretary, so being so isolated is... Um, A little strange for me. But again, not your worry. Um, At least not at the moment. Um, Does the machinery have any buttons while I was looking it up and down? It does not. Uh, the only thing that's really mobile on it is that the uh, the gold rings uh, rotate slowly. They rotate, do they? I wonder, I wonder if you could, like, touch them. If they move. I wouldn't try it. Me neither. Architecture in this building is weird. So, um, after that conversation, um, the two of them are, uh, well, our Arisa is, uh, taking the role of explaining things that have happened. Um, and uh, she is starting by um, 
telling the proxy about a uh, a, a bit of earth a the size of a small farm that has um, begun to disobey gravity in uh, the area near Orvis province. Um, as well as strange appearances of um, elementals where there were not known to be any um, here and there around the countryside. Um, Yeah, go ahead and go wherever you'd like to go. That inn, if you go down that northeastern street, um, you could just stick your tokens up there. And uh, there's not really anything identifiable in this city as an inn because it's all kind of just rotted out stone walls um, at this, this point I in mean, time. I mean, anywhere where people are staying, there's going to be some congregation of other folks or some food, Yeah, you know. You can usually tell where the center of habitation is. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, yeah. you see proxies living their lives in such a location. Um, uh, this is a significantly more shifted than last time, right? I was following Montmar, and then I realized everyone else was running in a circle. It is significantly more shifted than last time. All of the buildings have sort of wobbled um, in a... Uh, yeah. Are they shifted in these slices the way they are in this map? Um, I want you to imagine a little bit more connectivity than is visible here. Um, As if they were stretched instead of sliced? Yeah. Okay. Crazy. Like, uh, like the town has been rippled a little bit. Frozen, frozen in a, in a water drop. Yeah, I get it. The wave passes through it, freezes it up. The next yeah, wave yeah. passes through it, fluids it up, etc. Right, right. But then that means that it does still trace back to an epicenter that is the the proxy, right? Um. Yeah, her tower is basically the one spot that doesn't seem like it's changed much, if at all. Yeah, yeah like, like someone grabbed it with a blur brush and kind of swerved it around but not at the center or like it was a radio tower and like it broadcasted an amp you know kind of yeah exactly let's keep playing with metal uh, like but explicitly i think what it really did was rebroadcast an effect we saw somewhere else when we were fighting at the tower right hey, i follow yeah that would make sense because Probably trying to do it everywhere. We didn't see it inside means, the volcano, though. Right, well, and we haven't been back to the Star Tower to see if it's changed. <clears throat> uh, but I think it actually is related to the, the fact that there's this antenna on the top of this proxy's tower specifically. But I think that implies that it does still have a link to the secretary, whatever it thinks, you know? If what happened at Vest caused this, they must still be connected in some way. Right, but what caused this could have happened in our time two months ago, three months ago, could, long before have. we went to Vest. Yeah, it could have. I'm not saying I have definitive proof, but uh, the nature of this warping feels different from other warping, and we did see something similar. At Vess. Yep. 
Does it look like there's any I mean, height differential in the way it, that they're rotated? Um, enough that you had to move slowly with the wagon on the way in, um, but not so much that you have to put any real effort into walking over it. Mm. Well, right, but so vertical, that is kind or, of... vertical stretching wouldn't would do that. It wouldn't bother our, our movement necessarily. It would just kind of fuck up the, the meridian. And we've seen we've seen vertical stretching both all the way down and upward. We've seen that in both both ways. Yeah, what I'm saying is I think we're looking at a sort of like um, dampened down echo of our fight with the the captain of the guard at the Tower of Vess. You're saying that what we did to the ta- to Vess is being replicated here? Not exactly. I think it's an echo. Like, I think it was literally rebroadcast as it happened. Oh, so you think we did the thing, it went bang, this thing rebroadcast it, and it shifted the world around it. Exactly. I think it's connection to the secretary right. uh, allowed it to act as a conduit for those same forces. Well, that's terrifying, but cool. I mean, does that mean that literally every place with with one of the like with a connection got rippled when we defeated that? Because we haven't been back to every place. Yeah, no, we would have to look. Uh, we would have to look to confirm that. Uh, and Arissa wouldn't know because apparently the proxies because, themselves are not affected. Well, so, they're in the middle, right? They they don't get yeah. the ripple, so Arissa wouldn't know. So fuck, man. Okay, cool. Well, wait. Making it Couldn't up. we just call up Deck, Deckus on the um, network and see if he sees anything different? Theoretically, yeah. And we yeah, then we can check the down. other, the rest of the network and say, hey, what are you guys seeing? What do things look like in the shiftings? Oh, fuck, dude. Though, wait, depending on the radius of the shift. Now I'm curious who got shifted or what got shifted. Well, it would only have been around the proxies, but again, we didn't see it at the volcano, and uh, Arissa hasn't reported anything. Um, no one was shifted so, to the place we started tonight. Right. So what stands out to me as different is the fact that, A, this proxy is fully intact, and it is literally connected to an antenna. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like physically, you know? Yeah, for sure. You've like got not, people not metaphorically. At- RSS tower, and um, they did not report anything weird. Right. Right. I feel like that says something. Yeah, I do too. I don't know what, but I agree. I think one of the things it says, though, is that regardless of what the proxies say or feel, they're probably still connected to the secretary like we thought slash were told. Right. And what what the captain of the guard said was probably true. Right. Even if they don't know it. Well, yeah, they don't know it. We know we well, they at least aren't saying they know it. Yeah, they're not aware or they're lying, but I don't think they're all lying. I think they're not aware. But also, this brings to mind the shit that we said earlier about like, is the secretary sus? Right. Oh, I don't care. Suscretary. The suscretary. I like that. Because I kind of, I, I, I am, I have a growing apprehension. That's all I'm going to say. I do too, actually. I crossed my mind weeks ago, and then I ignored it because I didn't want to believe it. Yeah. Well, it, it was a sneaky suspicion in my head, which was like, I don't think I caught everything that happened last session. Maybe I'm wrong. But then I was watching you guys talk, and I was like, no, maybe I did. And then last session, I remember all clearly, and this session, I remember all clearly. And I'm pretty fucking sure that the secretary is sus. Well, we've never... Yeah, I thought Mont Lauren's argument was pretty um, substantial. I agree. No, I do agree with that. 
why one of the questions I have for Holtzman is what does the secretary look like? Good call. Actually, that's a super good call. Yes, I like that too. I don't like talking to the ghoul. Not even a ghoul. I don't like talking to the echo. He's a warped echo. I don't like this. This, this, this shit makes me feel icky. His body. Yeah, not him. That's kind of worse, but okay. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, kind of. No, it's just a reflex. Well, the same way well, that I mean, like a body would twitch if he is shocked, it was static. Because it's explicitly his body and not him, that implies that there is a soul and that that soul is not what is being tormented by bringing it back to ask questions. So, but, but come on, how does the body answer questions that the soul cannot? Because the, the body the has drive. its own memory. Does it really? Yeah. Does well, it D&D? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, okay, it okay. Might, uh, I, I just Elvis Taver spent a good week, you know, picking apart through a simulated quote unquote brain. This, this, isn't how my people treat the dead. this just isn't how my people treat the dead, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I, I, it's not normally a thing that I, I, would, I would advocate, even. Uh, but I do take solace in the fact that it's not his soul, at least. It's still dubious that you can't get real answers without actually harassing the soul. Well, no, that's why I can only answer certain questions and not others, because it isn't the soul. Right? right. The corpse can't tell you what Holtzman thinks, because it doesn't think. It only remembers. It stories so, bones tell. Yeah, okay. I'm going to trust you, because you're an elf, and elves are generally smarter than us dwarves. Oh, I'm just table talking what the spell <laughs> actually says it does. Like I was role playing. Come on, get with the program. Because <laughs> yeah, Mont Lauren doesn't actually do shit about this, to be clear. That's all I'm saying. Let me try. All I'm saying is Amber Green, trust Mont Lauren because you are a noble elf. And I've been taught that you guys are pretty academic. <laughs> Too funny. I do have above average intelligence, but only the country, dude. Hmm. Yeah, man, my int is 10. I think I might be smarter than you, but like literally only just. Mine is only 10. Mine's a 14. Holy <laughs> shit, my int is 12. I'm actually kind of smart. Okay. Right. Uh, no, you are. You are. You have a reason. Well, I'm not as wise. That's right. So, yeah, I got the wise. However, my int is 10, but my wisdom is 20. So. Right. Mine too. I know how the world works, kind of. It's just kind of a gut right. thing, though. You feel it in your heart, you know? Yeah. Right. I'm not super bright, and so I'll trust what you say when you say that this isn't actually speaking to the soul. But to me, I feel like we're like... Mm. Yeah, I kind of feel like Montlard is a um, less blithe Zaphod Beeblebrox. That's right. Kind of like, some... Sometimes you're like, man, that guy's really smart. And then other times you're like, what the fuck, you dumbass? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were introduced to me as um, Betlaren's younger brother, his impetuous younger brother, who wasn't yet a lord. Yeah, o older brother, but yeah. Oh, I thought you were younger. I'm sorry. I thought you were the younger he, he, Well, he's a half-elf. So his, I think it's like 40-some years I'm in the world, is significantly more mature than Mont Lawrence now 66 years okay. in the world. Can I say, can I say that I I'm okay, I'm sorry. I'm okay sorry. with you being uh, Zaprod beautiful rocks because that means I'm your Ford. <laughs> I are, are you? <laughs> no, yeah. You're a little wittier than Ford. Uh, Ford Prefect isn't a bright guy. Well, I mean, yeah. The guy who you writes for... for is more he literally writes for the fucking uh the, the guy. All right, I did not mean to derail us with my metaphor. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. That's fine. Um, your loyal steed has kindly transmitted you the sounds and vision of 
Arisa trying to uh, make your adventures so far sound like something that have happened in present day and something that more people than you are dealing with. Um, and it's starting to sound like she is getting to the point of maybe trying to mention that there is something wrong with the star tower itself but she has not quite got there yet. How has the proxy been taking it so far? Um, so far, it's a problem to be solved. Okay. Uh, a, a unexpected um, small cataclysm in the country. Um, she asked if any of the uh, if, if if the the young empire has uh, seen any of the anything similar, and Aris had told her that they're there. Uh, we've we've gotten reports that they're. Um, seeing some effects of the situation there um and possibly further uh that's about where they're at now gotcha uh how do we all feel about that because like you... eventually She's gonna walk the proxy right up to the line of, and a thousand years have gone by, and you're stuck in a loop. Right. I, no. Especially considering that we've met a bunch of people who are maybe in loops. Yeah. I mean, I would really like this proxy to realize that and then stay lucid. So that's kind of the goal. I'm just curious if we have any apprehensions before it actually gets there. I don't want to go there to see that it doesn't work or, you know, you know what, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to do like that is a bridge too far to hope. Well, the problem is if it goes bad, it could go very bad with an army, a literal army of headless proxies at her command. Right, well, I mean, right. maybe that, but but also we are all stuck elsewhere. Right. That's bigger well, to me well, than anything that anyone else does, is we are all stuck elsewhere. We are all not down, around yeah. anymore. We're down. We're right? down the street. Oh. Like, that's not that bad. Mm. Also, uh, my buddy Pat Bounty's there, so in a worst case, I suppose, I could have him... Um... Can Mounty travel... You know, fuck, I don't know the word. What would the word be for instances? What do you mean? Um, I don't know this word. Mm -hmm. Amber Green says, uh, my extra uh, dimensional brain just keeps putting this into my head. It's an instance. There are different instances. You follow? Uh, not precisely i think we may be talking about different things what do you think is going to happen i think we're going to get sliced into the world into the reality being created by the thing separated well, from the from the consensual reality so to speak what you're saying is you think if the proxy realizes the state it's actually in that will have some impact on the reality around it yes and us as a result okay. that's a thing i hadn't considered yeah right. that's legit that's my fear that is legit my fear that's my fear like right. if you're saying if it reconciles it may literally reconcile <laughs> 
correct and then we're not real or we are real or we're suspended or we're like i don't know there's like a fucking a half a dozen different ways that could go that none of them are good for us interesting tell, that's, me, that's fair. Resident, tell me i'm wrong what's, that's fair what's a resident wizard think of that was no afk i think it might be i'm not sure but oh, anyway tell, right. tell me i'm wrong like there's an area of suspended reality here or not suspended but curated there's an area of curated reality that we want to enter and uh, uh Ew. do you follow am i wrong am i just whack slam down no i don't think you are i don't do think it. you're I don't think you're whack, but there's a lot of potential upside to the proxy grokking the current reality and then being helpful. That's a huge upside. Yeah. Right. I mean, honestly, even unhelpful and lucid would be better because we could that's probably still get information out of it, right? Like, right. right. Yes, that's the fluidity we're hoping for. But we're submitting to that fluidity, are we not? Tell me I'm tell me I'm wrong. Haven't we been I've, doing that all along? Yeah, I don't think the proxy has that kind of control over the space directly because notice that the buildings have been worn and crumbling even before this shifting. They wouldn't be if she did. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, if she wanted to fix them, but maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she or, can't see them. Or maybe she can't right. see them. That's the other thing. Maybe she can't even see that. That's my point, though. If she can't see that, then clearly she doesn't have a direct control over the space. Why? Right, right. But once we enter the space, we are uh, spooky. It's spooky. I have no reason to believe she has that level of control because, again, remember this shifting, or at least remember my theory. Let's be, let's 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 cop to. But my theory here is that she didn't cause this shifting. That was the tower. Or the yeah. Suscriptary. Sus the or just a year's stuff, worth of shifting. The only well, stuff that the, the, yes, um, the only stuff that this proxy can do to or at or with us is through the uh, the headless town folk or direct action by itself. That would all be things that are very obvious and and detectable. Um, anything well, beyond me. anything beyond that to be able to have dominion over this region in a way that you're talking about would require the redshift to already be active and over this area and we'll be long gone by then sure i hear that That's are there town folk around us are there for, uh, what to do did i miss something in description are there are there fucking tourists here she thinks Whoa. uh the people oh, are in. still yeah. here I'm going to assume that you are talking in a relatively quiet location and not in the lobby of an inn. No. Um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm going to get them out, Lauren, in an alleyway. There are people. There are many people living their lives here in the town, and they're actual people, though. They're like they they animate. They have faces. Uh, no. None of them have faces because the the everything they're from projection. the neck up. Is uh, headless obliterated on these proxies. These are all just robot, pro right? So, when we talk yeah. about people well, living their lives, picture, they're but... all just clones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't remember. A picture. Hang on, let me, let me, yeah, I don't remember. This is about to fucking terrify they're me. Just, they're ridiculous. just NPCs going through their Shenmue loop. Yeah, there you go. Oh my fucking god, they have no heads, they have they're all headless. Heads. They are all headless, and that's okay. how. But that's how we know yes, that they are just clones. clones. And I don't believe they're real. I think they're just clones. I think with I think the headlessness is a symbol. I think this shows us something. Also, there's chunks. It's a blown up. Head. They had a head, and they don't any longer. It's not. Uh, yeah, or maybe it's a not fully assembled head. Would be maybe sure. a way to look at it. Sure, but no, I think it's the I think it's the former. I think I think it's parts of a not a head. Well, well if they're she's using... projections. They were yeah. never people to begin with. No, they're right. copies, like the copy we were gonna do with the like the copy we're making. We made no we made they're more like copies like the captain of the guard that we spoke to was. 
Yeah. Sure. Also had projections of the secretary's technology. Yep. Also headless. Correct. It's all fake. If they're all these are replications. I don't feel like these are real things. I think they're yeah, I don't think they're replications. I think they're emulations. Emulation is a good word. Yeah, I'll take that word. I don't know that word. I'm a Hildorf man. There's some Aquila. Yes. That's I agree. I just call them clones. It's easier. This shit is all spooky. Also, the noise they're making over at the... I don't know where they're making that. That noise is fucking spooky. Listen, can you hear it? No. It just sounds like a big fart. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like someone's using, like, compressed air. But we're 270 feet up. Like, we're on the 27th floor. (laughs) Right? Yeah. That's That's kind of sound carries, though. The, can you imagine the person doing that is probably wearing some fucking ear cans and shit like oh yeah oh yeah don't, don't spray your friend's butt with that you know, I fucking hate that they do road repair late at night on the weekends because like I'm just close enough to the highway that I hear that shit every weekend because they're just right. clear it's because they're well, building yeah. the highway up here but yeah if you've seen the pictures I've put, po- sorry to go- divert, but if you've seen the pictures that I've posted from my window, I live next door to the um, the depot where all of the city, San Diego city buses all come in and park. And like they go through the washer and park, right? Um, and I think that's where this is coming from. Uh, that makes sense. Yep. They probably also do other maintenance. So that's probably why they yeah, it's, a, it's yeah, literally okay. their RT, RTD. Does that make sense? They're, it's literally yeah. their public transit bot. Well, it does for me because I know where you grew up. Yeah. Right. Correct. And I live here. So yeah. <laughs> it's where they park all the buses at night. Totally. But like also probably where they like do the oil and brakes right. and tires all and it. shit too. All of it there. Yeah. Yeah. When they come in, they go through a big ass fucking truck washer and then they come around. And do another line, and then they go in and park in this big grid, and then they like if they have broken parts, they go put over to the left side of the lot, and there's a big garage over there. And then like at two in the morning, you can if like if you're up because you're me, um, you'll see some dude will just walking along the fucking corridors of buses, flashing his flashlight, looking around, making sure no one's sleeping in the bus. <laughs> yeah, like, What's up? The bus, sir. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I live next to the fucking bus line. Mm-hmm. Lot. San Diego, and it makes weird fuzzy noises, and we can get back to the game now. Yeah, we're... Yeah. Uh, what do, what, what, what are you all thinking? And I'm sneaking... Right, I'm hanging near to Mont Lauren. If, if, um... I, I, I articulated my fear. My fear is we step into a place where one of these things has... Uh, agency has real actuarial power, and all of a sudden we're snapped out of our reality. What I'm thinking is that if Gemery is operational like this, that it is unlikely to have been a place uh, looted by the uh, direct cobalt. So yeah, I am sneaking, well, but not exactly like trying to. Stay super sneaky, just like try to get past, you know, the occasional endless proxy citizen, and then maybe find a place that's unoccupied and see if there's maybe some surviving shit. So maybe. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, every once in a while, been, I might uh, try to circle around yeah. and uh, check up on the proxy. Would have just been sorry. I missed like the second half of that. Can you say over what you were gonna do? Second half, just all of what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna sneak around. Uh, just really trying to avoid most of the uh, headless uh, citizens. Not exactly trying to just like sneak. More like just not stay in one place for too long. Okay. Uh, Try to find a quiet location uh, with the idea that maybe some artifacts survived the uh, Dragonkin's looting, specifically because there is an operational proxy here doing shit. Right. Uh, And then every once in a while, I might, if it takes long enough, 
uh, try to circle around back to where the proxy and the horse is and maybe try to just get into eye shot or your shot, you know what I'm saying? Figure out what's what's going on. Already. Well, the only things that you really find that are um, still intact, uh, you find what looks like the remnants of like a arc, probably. There's um, like bits of iron fence that are still standing or like uh, hanging on at a 45 degree angle somehow still in the ground uh, and um uh you see a statue of a horse that's sort of been stretched out uh like an exploded tube of toothpaste um that might have been a centerpiece of the park at one point um but the The proxies who are enjoying the park on this day treat it like normal. They even, um, uh, sorry if I forgot to say that the, the, the statue is fallen over, it's on the ground. Oh. Um, and they, uh, they walk around it. Um, they seem to have the mental acuity to acknowledge that it's there and uh respond in kind but they don't indicate that they think anything is strange about it and at a later point you see some of them stop and a couple of them comment on the statue as though it were standing of course it's sort of like uh what was going on in this except uh i can see it rather than hear it i guess i can hear it too yeah um but yeah they they don't really pay you any attention i mean a couple of people that you pass by on the street say hello politely um but you're you're nobody in this town right now It doesn't seem like anything survived. It has been um, like a thousand years. Ma, yeah, any um, any evidence that you're going to be able to find would be metal and ceramics. That would be the only stuff that's still intact, and most of it is um the, the the metal is is rusted down and the ceramics are uh crumbling uh nearly if you uh if you touch them or if you if you jostle them too too roughly yeah <laughs> no funny. but um people are people in the inn are sitting down and they are eating and drinking, even though there are no tables, there are no chairs, and there are no, um, there's no anything that they're really interacting with. They are. Wait, we're we're seeing ghosts. Yeah, we're, we're seeing, seeing the headless clones. You're seeing proxies doing all of the stuff, living their lives. Oh shit! Oh fuck! The proxies emulating yeah, it's weird. their lives. Well, why would they model it that way? Why do they bother? Oh, weird. I get it. They, I get it. they only see it the way they were programmed. Right, right, right. And oh, they're in right, a right, perpetual right. loop that only sees it the same way every we're, time. We're thinking right. it's kind of like the one at Orissa's Tower. The proxy tried to save or protect the people, and the yeah. closest it could get was making yeah, copies of them. This is what you do. Exactly. This is what you have been doing. This is what you will do every day, now and to forever. Right. Well, that's all the sim that it can run, right? Right. No, absolutely. As above, or sorry, not as above, but as before, so after. But it, I don't know. It's interesting because it doesn't seem like it's aware it's doing it either. No, it's in, it's it's in a loop, quite literally in a programmed loop. Everything is fine as long as it's the way it is. It's good. Loop it. 
Right. If there if the loop disappears, then either all of the clones disappear as well, or there's chaos. Chaos. Because suddenly the sunglasses are off, or they realize they're, they're, the headless chicken quality suddenly becomes realized, and they have no they can't see anything at all. You know, they're, yeah, dude, if they're if they're proxies, they just lose their programming and they probably just stop wherever they are. I mean, right. I mean, if it were a movie from the 80s, they would run rampant. They would go crazy and do weird shit. But there's no good reason for that. They would probably just right. stop. Right. Stop and drop, maybe. Well, T-Pose, right? Like those of us in games, exactly. Those of us in games industry, right? Like you got <laughs> you got no fucking player controller, you T pose. That's funny. Yes, exactly that though. It it makes it an interesting um dilemma, I guess. Well, it makes me wonder if she shut them all down or she get the rest of her own head back. Right. Do you think she's procking them? Well, somebody had to. No. She, I think she's Gemery, them. I'm just saying. Yeah, them. and Gemery was the place of the military, so it was probably her job to make clones. Sure. At this point, that's super fucking table talk. Is all I'm saying. Because <laughs> I'm sure Evergreen doesn't know fuck or all about clock cycles. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. I mean, <laughs> given that they're all proxies, it's pretty obvious they're projections of that technology, though. So she's probably controlling it, whether she knows that or not, you know? Well, if you think Dude, about I I how, would, how would a proxy, back in the days when everything was functioning as intended, working as, working as intended, um, how would Gemery and the proxy at Gemery function in order to create and train and assemble and prepare an army. The army of Vess came from Gemery. So how would she do that unless she is just building fucking clones? Yeah, she No, I don't she hold on. I don't think I don't think that's the case. I don't think that this ability uh I don't think that this this manifestation is a thing that was intentionally built into the proxy. I think the proxy had the ability to make projections to make training Veshin troops easier. But I think all she did was train Veshin troops. I don't so then think, where did these clones come from? I think when everybody died in the shifting, she tried to save them all by backing them up. And it didn't work, so this is what we've got. Okay. I still, I still think my perspective has some merit, but okay, I can buy yours. Yeah, I mean, I don't actually know. Like, we haven't found. Oh, either we haven't found out. How, right of how their army was actually built, but given that nobody questioned a normal human knight in, in you know, in in livery, I'm guessing that's the normal case for their army. Okay. All right. All right. I can dig it. On the other hand, they may just not be able to perceive us properly. Right. Yeah, that's the other reason why I don't think these are part of like a projection system that she did because she would have, you know, some sort of sensory awareness of and over them. And she doesn't seem to be aware of their existence whatsoever. Right. Well, the other thing is, is that they each have individual lives or programmed our- activities. And they can interact with us, which would be an interruption of the loop. I think they're autonomous processes. Yeah, they, they like, can do things on their own, everything. like capturing a ruby in a jar was... Um, right. They don't do that every day. So they have right. some amount of um, things There's they some can agency do there outside of their own you know, normal loop. It could be, you know, in their hierarchy of needs, they just do the same thing every time because their needs are met. But you know, seeing something, seeing something that doesn't um, really make sense or is curious to them, could interfere with their hierarchy of needs. And suddenly, oh, I gotta you know capture this little dragon-looking thing is a higher priority than I gotta finish my morning right. run. 
they're effectively uh it is total table talk, but they're effectively a revival they have they have, they have needs they have a schedule <laughs> yeah. but they're also capable of reacting to the state of the world around them you know, i'm gonna reflect on my historical knowledge what do i what do i come up with oh it's only 11 hmm. <laughs> uh what what history are you like what what uh where when of here where we are and how is this similar to what was um see i have a plus four in history so i thought that'd be rad but then i rolled super well, maybe a 15 on the roll though so, yeah, it yeah is. okay um arisa yeah. told you that gemory was a military town uh, and that the proxy there was assigned to train Vesalt's military. Okay. Uh, That's actually kind of relevant, guys. Yeah. And and she had she had been in that role for centuries by by Aris's time. Uh so Gemery's been around for a long time. Oh right. hey. And it's a we know. bastion. It's a fucking not bastion. What's yeah. the other B word? What's the B actually word? barracks? It's a barracks. Yeah, it's a yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah. We yeah. actually know. We actually know that the original troops being trained here were were uh, physical normal elves because they were originally preparing a parade and these projections stopped. Elves. They have a range. Uh, wait wait wait. You said elves. Yeah, this is an elf This was a kingdom. A place of elves. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it had a. Um, Pretty sizable moon elf population among among all the other common species. Okay, I had never noticed the race shit. Like, ah, well, they've all yeah. been dead for most of the time we've been here, right? But like, so the, if you recall, the nobility, the king and the queen and the princess right. and stuff—they're all elves. And the very first place we investigated was an elven tomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. No, dude. Uh, I hate to say it this way, but Ambergreen doesn't really see race. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't what I what I actually mean by saying that though is that I didn't register these are elven tombs versus other things. I thought that they were tombs of the place we were, which you know they were. Like, yes. you know yeah, I mean? absolutely. Right. Yeah, I get you. I didn't, um, I didn't recall that they were specifically. But yeah. But my point is you know that they were assembling that parade and that these projections have a range, there's no way that parade could have been made with these projections in the original history. Right, right. So these proxies are not how their army was made. Right, they're not OG proxies. They're not proxies of the people of right. at the time. Well, they are proxies of the people that were here at the time, but they were not proxies at the time, is what I'm saying. You're saying some Heaven's Gate shit. No. I'm saying, back in the day, this was a fort filled with real-ass people. The red shift happened, the real-ass people died. And they've oh. been replaced by these proxies. Okay, yeah. Oh, so, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So to recap what you're saying, to make sure I understand what you're saying, uh, you're saying the fucking actual inhabitants of this place died to the red shift or died fighting something similar. And then... Or died in the conversion to being proxied. Like well, or... God, that's the darkest timeline. Yeah. Well... It's not if it yeah. saved them. I mean, saved? No head, dude. Right. I was thinking floppy disk icon, you know? Not if it saved yeah, yeah. Them. you mean saved, like, yeah, exactly, like saved to disk. <laughs> Amber Green does not understand that. <laughs> you would have to say, like, you know, like uh, the proxy recorded <laughs> their music. They recorded who for they archival purpose to a yeah. paper, and then they replay that song, and that's them playing that song. And I would still be fucking horrified and say, uh, <laughs> ah, but that's just the refrain. You're just the refrain that is security guard over and over and over and ah, that's terrible. That's a, if that's I did that for you, you would tell me to stop. <laughs> That security guard, not just security guard, that security guard. Right, the security guard with the doodly doodly do in the middle. Yeah, I know. If I did that right, over right. and over again for you, you would tell me to stop. Right, you were only I'm ever really the really light really. motif of Edelbard, you know, but you're still the light motif, right? Right, yeah, every one of these is the light motif forever. That's fucking right, creepy right. as hell. Well, but effective. The well played. And yes, I was 
I was equally horrified when we first came here. We do this at IRL, but at least they weren't people first. And so, they don't have any so they don't know. knowledge of being themselves. So as, as the conversation no. between them goes on, um, how close does it get to, um, or how, how much closer is it getting to telling, you know, the tower's messed up, things happen, uh, whole region's kind of in trouble? It's been a thousand years! Uh, well, like I said, um, it, it could take them a good couple of hours to get there because um, Arsa is going to go into actually how the technology that she's supposedly using works, which is the communication device that you all found on the flying island. Uh, and... Uh, She'll gloss over the fact that it needs to be linked to a particular point to work properly. Um, and uh, she's, she has, uh, it, it seems like Arisa is. um let me ask you for let me uh the, the i think the only one who's able to listen in on this are nimbus and mont lauren so let's ask you for an insight check of 18. all right okay. Dude, i was right next to mont lauren until i ran oh. yeah, yeah but i'm but getting I, telepathic knowledge getting yeah. telepathic oh, okay. Knowledge. okay nope and uh, badass is right roll. there, and I'm pretty sure I can't see also, no. him close enough. <laughs> we're we're just not able to read the uh, room on this one. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. Um, there are just some bugged voices, after all. Um, uh, for the time being, the proxy has mostly but just been listening and asking, "How do people solve this problem? Who is responsible for?" for doing this like is this still an issue uh again it's mostly stuff that you guys have solved previously um and she has not quite gotten to the point of uh, saying anything real oh she's kind of sneaking up on it hedging sounds like yeah But also, it sounds like the the proxy of Gamma Ray hasn't come to any realizations of its own, or if it has, it's keeping them close to its chest. Yeah. yeah. Fucking sus. Sus. Well, re just remember, yeah, if somebody came to you and said, "Check your, check your own perspective. Check your own." Uh, diagnostics. Sure, wouldn't sure. you check it and go, "I'm fine." Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and then the shrink that you're talking to says, so let me show you this thing over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So I, I, there's a way in, she needs to actually, there's reasonableness in that Arissa needs to generate rapport, communication, having a dialogue storytelling which is engaging and immersive yeah with before she actually delivers the death blow fair enough so that's i mean it's only in the hours right in the programming right that should be the way she's set up to deliver that you are correct i think okay Have I been able to catch any snippets here or there while I've been sneaking around? Um, from people or from the conversation? Both. Um, I, did you walk near the conversation again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I get uh, quote-unquote spotted, 
uh, I'll just try to make it look like I'm just, you know, wandering. I'm not listening. I'm just wandering about and I circled around over here. Got it. Um, well, uh, at at the point that you do come close by, um, uh, <clears throat> Arisa uh, spots you and um, <clears throat> she says, oh, good, good timing. Uh, Alvis Taver. I was just um telling the proxy uh about that um aberration that you encountered. Um you told me it was it was um rather near uh to the vest itself, didn't you? Oh, yes. Uh, which, which... You helped protect, uh, Sir, um, what was it, Sir Kita? Oh, yes. From that, um... Can you describe for the proxy how that glowing beast appeared. Uh I'll it's walk a up lime there. and horrible in nature. Um the property As... says yes because I I'm trying to make sense of all of these sudden appearances of of, of strange creatures and um the, the things that Arsa is telling me it, None of it is really... Why would all of this be happening? It, uh, it doesn't... It's it's like... Like... It's almost like an invasion... Um, from another plane. Or something like that. She might be right on track there. You know, has... Have any of these... Um, you, you say you've, you've personally encountered one of these or, or, or more of them. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Alvis Tiver, have they, have they ever spoken to you? Uh, I mean, not to me directly. No, I was out of conversation at the time, but I certainly did listen to some of the aberrations and what they had to say, but most of them are most of them are mindless and have no state of being uh, besides uh, Well, that would be very good information, sir. If you remember, what the ones that did speak, because if this is an invasion, then maybe there's some through line that we could identify between the lot of them that would uh, that would give us some indication of of what, where they're going to strike next or why they're doing it. See, see, that, right. that that's why I'm dancing around the issue. You seem like a very logical person, right? Right, and uh, and they said. It was the heaven that demanded things need to, what, not change, but uh, be fixed, made right. Mont Lauren, they, they actually, they talked to you. You were more yeah. on with them. Indeed. I, I, I had a... I can't say lengthy, but I had a conversation with uh, the entity that, well, it called itself the truth, I guess. Um, uh, it's almost it's it's it did call itself the truth. It did call itself the truth. 
agent of the heavens. Anyway, he yeah. spoke of a greater force, a power that was trying to reconfigure reality. Uh, well, I say that now, but that's only in retrospect. At the time, it said it was trying to shape things. What, what was it, Alex Taver? Was it to perfection or appropriateness? I, I don't remember. It but... was something like, I remember this conversation. And no, I remember. It was something like to appropriateness or to uh, correctness. As, as it should be. It it should as correct. it should be. Right. Yeah. I think it was as it should be. I have yeah, no That was the words that, that were used. As it the should notes, be. The notes that I have say as it should be. So yeah, I, it was trying to re like recorrect is that a right word restore restore but restore, restore require like restore. Ah, it was trying to smoosh what was real into the space that what ought to be it is had that a very alarming effect on some of the poor victims uh, that we saw Right, it because it's really crushing what reshape exists. them. Right, you know, it crushes what exists into the shape it it it, it hopes it ought to be. Like, I right? won't lie, my lady proxy. I I hesitated to broach these reports to you because they're horrifying. It is. It's like if somebody <laughs> sang me a song, and I just warped the notes to a to a. What are you, you know, to a stave that I thought was better? Like, or if I took a song that couldn't be played on my instrument and just just changed it to my instrument, but poorly. I do not have the liberty to be horrified, my friends. Because I have to take responsibility for things where I can. But now, I'm in a terrible situation because I'm stuck here and isolated because of these problems while, while this chaos is going all around, uh, all over my country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's actually been quite peaceful since we've got here. I mean, the past oh, year or so. Just here. That, I mean, the... the we have, we've experienced recently. Even still, we still can't have we still can't have events like this cropping up here and there at random. The the even if things are okay in the in the general term, people are going to start to panic when they keep happening, and we don't have a solution for them. And to tell them that that all of the proxies are <laughs> are nearly offline is. Okay. Uh, not going to do them any favors. Um, mm. did, uh, did did Arissa tell you about the dragon? Whoa! Wait, though. Um, yeah, I don't think not. yeah. I I, I, the the, the okay. there was a a a young upstart of a dragon seemed interested in taking advantage of the. Um, situations, but fortunately, the um, the the organized people of of Vesoth were able to drive him off before too long. So the the damage was minimal, and we don't think he'll be back anytime soon. Oh no, he won't. Be. No, but uh, I'm I'm very. She says, uh, the proxy says, um, things, things keep getting worse. I mean, we've got, we've got some kind of, uh, what in the world could it mean by heaven? Would you repeat that, sir? She said, what in the world could it mean by heaven? If there's some ah, kind okay. of force that wants to invade Vesoth or, or or even even invade Earth with Vesoth as as a entryway, then 
We have to we have to find how they're getting here. Well, to it. Lore drop. Hey. Um Arisa, b- besides y- getting our communication back on, is there anything that you that you think that I can do here? I I can I can mobilize people from Gamory to work with you. In in fact, Montlaren, sir, since you. Uh, bear the crest of the kingdom. I'm sure you you have the right to take command if need be. I can I can give you the the right to deliver orders to oh, my shit. people here if you if you need it. Oh shit! Um, we're gonna gate in a whole elven army. That'd <laughs> be handy. You're getting the stargate. Would, would would that help you? Do you? Or or should should we await orders from Vess here mm-hmm. and be ready? We we can fortify the town. Uh, we can even potentially evacuate people here if need be. It's very safe and defensible. If something were to to happen to the nearby villages, we could we could get people um, gathered up, but. If we need soldiers in the field, then um you you've really been hedging the the story getting to the point where I said I have oh, been getting to the point. I uh, if I may offer I, I I do have one one quick question. I, uh, as I've been stumbling about, I, I just want to escape my mind. Are you familiar with the project that the secretary and Holtzman have been working on? Uh, only only vaguely. The secretary mentioned that. Um, she had invited a, a wizard to study uh, with her, um, and that they were they were building the machine. But um, uh, I told her to let me know all the details once uh, it was done and successful. Ah, I see. That uh, hmm. If I may offer um, an observation, my lady proxy. Given the state Listen, of there's no need to be all formal here. We we're here to solve problems together. You can you can call me whatever you like. Proxy's fine. Um, and uh, speak as freely as you need to do because there are there uh, apparently, as I've learned today, there are there are lives on the line. Uh, so we don't we don't really have any time to waste on formalities. Very well. I think your focus should be on your people here. Specifically with communication broken down, putting your troops into the field can only sow more chaos. Not only that, as you can probably tell from the reports that you've heard so far, most of the disruptions are magical in nature. If you have some way to harden this place against an incursion from another plane, that's what you need to focus on in the short term. We can relay orders and restore communication and bring back strategic ties. That's my job, of course. But until then, you need to focus on the immediate. I like the way you think. That's a that's a very astute plan. I I see the wisdom in it. I can do that for now. Um We have a few people uh, who can use magic in the in in the army. 
we can the the walls should be fortified but we can we can enhance them with uh more specific protections aberrant uh repulsion um should be possible i'll speak to them about it um I have to say, it seems like the communication device, the alternative that you've made, is is a success here. So, you said this is a prototype. You'll have to. Uh, is, is this your proof of concept? It works, and we can install a new one, a, a complete one, at some point. We don't know yet. The battery life of this proof of concept is only about a week's time. It's a limit, I see. That that makes sense. There is always a catch. Otherwise, we'd all be using it already. <laughs> right? As I understand it, plans are underway to make larger and more permanent versions if this test proves out, but... As as my friend Alvis Tower says, we, we don't really know yet. So far, it's been very promising. I think we've gotten further than we honestly expected. Have you brought this to the other proxies yet, or to the secretary? No. We've had no communication with any of them. Approaching the, the secretary has been difficult because of the magical effects of the area. Very difficult. Please. Why is that believe it? I kind of look over at the wagon deferentially and I say, I I don't know if if my lady Arissa has perhaps heard more. Um I am unfortunately effectively operating on detached duty. The last I heard, even the captain of the guard might have fallen in battle. Yes, yes. Twisted. <laughs> by the very magic that prevents us from everyone requires everyone requires some amount of uh, how can i put this judiciously some amount of um just looking at closely looking at there's a word for that uh examination examination is good Suspicion is a little rough, but um Arisa says Mount Lauren is right. Um uh, and uh yeah, th there's there's been trouble close to Vess as well as as well as in other parts. Um With Gemery as a as a stronghold, um, maybe we would do best to uh, regroup now that we have this proof, and um, perhaps we could try to bring it to the secretary. And see if if we can if we can get in touch with her safely, then we could convey the discussion we had here uh, until we can get a more permanent um, solution. I Is that, that will, either a negotiation or a fight. I will need your help, though, dear Lady Proxy, for this prototype is mostly a ramshackle device. Uh, and I, I am the closest thing Arissa has to an assistant of mechanical understanding. Nimbus, likewise, is genius in his own right, but these things are a little beyond us. And any help or rundown of the basics of this technology could really help us. I, I am merely an apprentice myself, and I didn't know much, just enough to make this. Hopefully this is proof enough of the device to show you that the knowledge that I'm asking for, though valuable, would not be wasted on. 
we need to all be rested and ready to wreck shit before we do this. We are. Okay, okay, cool. Um, what, what, uh, what, what, what can I help with? How can I, how can I help with the, well, the device itself? Well, even the basics and the construction of the red crystal are almost uh, alien to me. Uh, my direct master is working on something else entirely different uh, device based on obelisk, mithril, and arcane batteries. It generates a protective field, you see. They're very, very useful. Uh, the proof of concept is, is a wonderful, beautiful design. You should have, you know, we, we should have some way to show it off. It's honestly a shame that we don't. But uh, we were wishing to perhaps backwards engineer the technology that makes you uh, into said obelisk technology, but we lack the understanding of uh, one of the methods to do so. Ah, uh, I see. Um... So it's not so much that you'd like there to be more proxies, but more that you need the general design power source uh, structural integrity. Yes. This this design that we have on the cart is very fragile. Even the tension blanket that we have put on is part of what's keeping it operational. Understood. Very, very janky. Um Arsa says, um, actually, that could be a good idea if we're having trouble getting to, I, I mean, uh, uh, Proxy, this is an emergency um, situation, really. I, I think you can agree by now. Um, these, these fellows here... Uh, do have quite a bit of arcane might behind them. They could make use of the royal teleport circle if oh. if you would permit it. That's um, and take uh, the responsibility for that. Uh, we might be able to make a quick hop to Vest, bypass any danger outside the city and get right to business with the secretary. This tavern looks almost as if Marissa suggested something impossible. It's like, oh, I mean. She says, well. And you keep mentioning this danger. Is is everything all right around the city uh, at 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 Vest? That is, it, you don't. You're know. having you're having trouble getting there. You say, but are are are, are the the royal family, every, uh, and you, you even mentioned the guard captain. What's happening in the city? We don't. We don't know. No. The tower stands. We we know that. We we can we can see it. Um, but but every attempt to get close to the city has been driven away in one way or another. Whether it's 
an aberrant change to the nature of the very world itself, or what this same magic has done to the citizens of Bess when it's touched them. Circadius Keep is the uh, closest we've been able to get safely so far. This could be... You should have told me that and asked for this in the first place. This... You really buried the lead on that, Arisa. Um, if the capital is in danger and nobody can get in or out, the people there are... They're going to need help. If you can teleport in and teleport out safely, then of course I'm going to give you the coordinates. Do you have a piece of paper? Oh, oh yes, I absolutely do. She gives you a set of teleport coordinates. I'll uh, Excellent. sketch those down too since I don't know if he actually gets them that way. We will fortify Gemery here. If you find anybody who needs help in this situation, you can send them here. They will be safe. We will make homes for them. Okay. Get to that. Very well. Save everybody that you can. Work with the sec. Work with me there, the secretary. <clears throat> If she's been, if she, she has interfaces with that tower that allow her much greater awareness of the world around her than I even have here. She should know everything that's going on in, in Bess proper. Uh. If there's been an incursion of some kind, she must be protecting everybody there. The, the, the tower is big enough that it could even hold much of the population of Vess inside it if for, for a short time if they had to evacuate into it. So as long as the tower itself has not been breached, that would be the best place to... make a stand and 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 use as a as a launching point for for a counterattack. Um, if uh if the secretary herself is evacuated um and she's not available would is there still a way that we would be able to the only reason she would there? be available is if something has happened to her brain and if that has happened we are in a very very dire situation If you can make it into the Star Tower, she will be there. Okay. Okay. Tell wow. her I sent you. Tell her about our conversation. She'll believe you. And if you if you run into the guards or the king or queen and they they get on your ass about this, just tell them I gave you the coordinates. That's the only possible way you could have ever figured those out. So I'll take all the blame. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Well, as successful as this has been, uh, I don't think we can afford to delay. We should probably. No, I would. I would love to have you for longer, but it sounds like you have very important work to get to, and I will not keep you any more than I have to. Um, you're welcome back here anytime. Hopefully we can meet on better terms. Agreed. 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 Helpful. We appreciate it. That's my job. Uh, quietly to the rest of the group, I ask, um, are we packing up then? Sounds like it. Sounds like it. So, 
Um, when we have anything to return with, of course. Uh, if not us, there's uh, uh, others we're definitely working with. We'll make sure they identify themselves if they do come through without us. Formed a somewhat ad hoc commission to address the issue wherever we can. Very good. Yes, um, I'd I'd say um, obviously keeping people safe is top priority. We can we can use on foot messengers as long as we need to do this uh, communication device you've got here is excellent. Um, and if we can if we can finish it before getting the proper interlink repaired, then that would be good. But top priority is figuring out whatever this invasion is about and rooting it out. Indeed. Well then, I think I we will take this page. equipment. I think that we will take this equipment to Alsane's where we can use the resources there to hopefully finish the project of making this more permanent. In the meantime, I have a king to report to. Very good. Arisa, it was lovely to meet you. I I hope I can see you in person someday. Farewell. Shall I take it that you leave the town? Indeed. Yep. I mean, unless anybody else has another idea, I think we should just gracefully exit for now. Yep. yep. Nope. Let's leave. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. We're leaving. Yeah, no, I'm going to look at the place where the privies used to be and see if there's any diamonds in the ground. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not enough pressure, not enough time. Okay, you are on the world map just outside of Gemery. You've got about a... It'll be tomorrow by the time you get back to All Saints. Um, once, once you're out of earshot of the front gates, Arisa says, Sorry, I choked. Clearly, what do you mean? I couldn't, I couldn't tell her the whole truth. I, I I just couldn't get there. No. But the sly I, is useful as it is. I don't think you would have succeeded for what it's worth. You know, I think you're right, Mon. Like I said, yeah, I, I mean, this, this was effective, and that's great. And even though Mon has a job to do there, it doesn't have to happen right this minute. At the same time, I will say that I understand Arissa's challenge. I find it quite heartbreaking myself. Yeah. I am uh, in no hurry uh, to dispatch that proxy. Mm. Yeah, and I was like, I was worried that we, we were going to have to, you know, yeah, dispatch her, just like you said. Well, but this is a really great ending because now we can teleport. It solves so many things immediately. And then we can go back and do what we have to do when later, you know, we don't have to do it right this minute. I suppose the thing to do is we make our way back um, for um, this version of you, Arissa. We'd like to have you communicate everything that you want Arissa Prime to know, so that way, um, if she needs to uh, dispatch another updated copy with current information, it, it will be possible. That's a very clever idea. I had hardly thought of it myself. 
Excellent. Okay. So uh, unless there's a way that you can transfer what you've learned to Arisa Prime, but it didn't sound like that was a capability or that it was the plan. So I don't. The whole idea is that I'm not connected to the Obelisk network. So I'll, I'll stick around for another day and I'll chat with me. <laughs> you can chat with us. Happy to. Hopefully we're not too boring. Right. I'll be here. Oh, you kids just let me entertain the proxy for a solid hour and a half with story, stories and I didn't even get through all of them. Well, there's a lot of stories to tell, but you I think even tell them you, about made, the dragon. you made an impression. I want to record as many. And you established that rapport, which was really important. My thing is stories. So, so I, think, I think you did great, because without that rapport, she never would have given us the teleport coordinates. If you haven't got good, like, I, I want to record what stories you have before you go, if you're going to go. Mine? Sure. You can ask the real me. Well, I could tell you a few, but then the other me won't remember which ones I've told you, and she might want to tell them differently. Even Ooh. better. <laughs> yeah, he just won't go tell Arissa that you told him the story. What was your impression of the proxy, Arissa? I... I couldn't tell her the truth. I, I just had a really... Even though I don't have a stomach, I, it aches like hell thinking about what would have happened if I told her everything that's really been happening out here? And for how long? I think she'd be horrified. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I think she'll eventually... And beyond that, really horribly distressed that her clones, her proxies out in, out in the city are headless wonders and that her attempt was a failure i think that would just be horrifying to her i would imagine now that she's aware of some situation going on slowly but surely she might uh start to become a little bit more aware of everything going yeah. on which she did seem partially aware of our presence didn't she yeah Previously, I mean, as if she had some contiguous memory between our visits. Yeah. I was surprised that, that we interrupted that loop and she related to us and then that she, it was remembered. Okay. That's very different. Right. You again. Well, she might not necessarily be right. in the loop like everyone else. Right. But even the guard at the gate remembered. Yeah. He said, we've been waiting. Yeah, I mean, maybe been we waiting. misinterpreted what they were saying, but I got the impression that maybe they remembered us. Yeah. Yep. More than once throughout this. It only seemed that way. Be secure. More than she has one. work to do. That much will keep her going for long enough. She has a, she has a clear task that she can fulfill, and, and she's She's in her element right now, even if it's a, a stressful situation. I can't, I can't break that illusion for her. I mean, what do you think will happen if we did? I don't know. I suppose I mean, another thing that I'm worried about now is if she does actually succeed in connecting to the tower with the secretary as it exists now, uh, what it might do to that proxy. For all we know, it'll just become another uh, redshift site. Yeah, 
So that's right. a, another worry from all of this. But now that we actually have access to the tower, or hopefully if the coordinates still work, that gives us a chance to finally start making our way in and seeing what we're exactly facing here. That's right. In. And then we can get out. We're going to have to get a lot more supplies. Yes. I don't want to go into another potential interdimensional space without at least a week's worth of food. <laughs> that honestly, makes sense. That was, the thing that, was, that was the thing that was going through my mind the entire time. Was how long? Okay. Interdimensional, planetary, planetary, interdimensional. This is a song I've been working on. Well, that's for you kids who still have flesh to worry about, fortunately for me. I, mean, I suppose we could bring the uh, the wagon through a teleportation circle with us, but I just don't know how well you'd be able to do. It's kind of a labyrinth in there now. I mean, that, we don't even know if these coordinates work. Yeah, uh, we'll have to figure that out first. Hopefully they don't take us to somewhere that's um, not as safe as it used to be. How do we, how do right. we even test test these coordinates you try them yeah uh, i yeah. draw it on the ground i cast the spell and if it works it works if it doesn't then um, what i mean but i mean can we can we like put a stick through it or something yes uh, but unless there's somebody on the but, other side to pick it I, up you don't like, know i would like god to tell me you could use one of those you could use a divination spell to determine if it's safe Okay. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. There, there are a means and ways. Yeah. There are even ways and means. Hmm. Um. Well, we'll call the session right there, as you guys are getting back into All Saints. How about sounds you good. all take four thousand XP each before we go? Ooh, that uh, sounds good to me. Overwhelming victory here. Overwhelming victory. That's cool. uh, that's a big chunk. Yes, it is. I'm seven thousand from this level. Yeah, I'm nice. totally leveling up. That's amazing. Right. Level 12. I haven't had a level 12 character in a really fucking long time. I never <laughs> had a level 12 character. <laughs> We're getting up there. I mean, that's that's uh, kind of the thing. Anytime it gets to about 5, it's like, oh no, things are too cool. We gotta end it now. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> thank well, you very much for the session, sir. Yeah, that was a yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah, but... um. To, to address what you were saying there, Nero, that's because um, over level 20 in regular old school AD&D, players were uh, demigods. And what the fuck? Why bother? It's re that's really it's after after 12th. You have Whoa. to start running Sigil. Yeah. Well, no, you don't even have to get to Sigil until like maybe 14th or so. Sure. But like but like, yeah, you're right. Twelfth, you're a you're a hero on the on the prime material plane. Uh, once you yeah. go elsewhere, things get worse. But that whole dynamic has been super shifted by by the most recent like D and D is whatever, and you should be super cool with everyone, and you should be able to be whatever. And it's I like, think it's um that's cool, but now your prime your primes aren't primes anymore. Now all people, the planes, you know? People want the uh pe people want one of two things. They either want to be a plane topper superhero or they want to have like the super personal, really tight, like down to earth uh drama story. You are kind and of the latter you can, but it the game is not designed to do that at high levels. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I totally hear you. Um, the game is designed for you to have a very different kind of 
personal trajectory and right. you get past like 7th, 9th, 12th, 14th, by the time you're 15th level, you can't be dealing with like your mom and dad anymore because you, <laughs> you got to be dealing with Satan. You got to be, yeah. Well, right. Yeah, you be, right. You're right. a mythic hero at that point. Correct, right. You're a mythic hero, and that's assuming that you've been playing this whole campaign quite along with you, you know, with your one dude, like we have on this show, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. Yeah. Which is cool. But um I'm talking about like I I I I used to do con games where you didn't know who was sitting down. They were sitting down and picking up a pre pre roll, you know? Yeah. And they were just there's just stuff. <laughs> gotta re gotta rein that in. And and you know, actually, to be very generous, um, a colleague of mine pointed out. He was like, "Yo, when you started playing D and D, uh, elf and dwarf were like literal classes. They were classes, yeah, yeah. right." And I was like, "That's fair. That's fair." And he goes, "The first time, and it's a colleague of mine I work with, um, but good night out there, everybody." <laughs>